What's up, Beaners? Welcome to yet another action-packed episode of Got Faded Japan, and I am your host, Johnny. And I'm Tom Tom Tokyo, back again. I'm Missy. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. And as you find folks know, Got Faded Japan is about three dudes. But coffee, caffeinate is very early in the morning. It's extremely early in the morning. So we're drinking coffee. We've got very, very strong coffee. I call this black crack. And uh, so it's three dudes, caffeine, and Tomo, what else is this? Japan and the news. That's right. And Missy, do you know what number this is? 627. It's 627. Hell yeah. <laughs> Still going strong. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And before we start this show, before we move forward, before we, before we hit the, the gas pedal really hard, um, I want to say thank you to Fader Allen. Fader Allen out there, thank you so much for gifting us these awesome shirts. We've got some incredible shirts right here, and um, let's read these shirts together. Okay, let's start off with Tom. Tom, yours says West 6 Kentucky Proud Brewing. I think it says something cool in the back. Local beer tastes better. That's what it says in the back, and that is awesome. I'm down with that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, Tom, what about mine? What's mine say? I can't read it. Or kind of... It says ethereal, ethereal brewing, brewing. and oh it's got some God. weird like archaic oh arcana symbols. So, I didn't look at this. Till I got the cool now. shirt. Is it dope? Yeah. 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 These are, I guess, are arcana experts. So can you interpret there? Nope, nope. but I. <laughs> <laughs> nope, but it looks. But she's also an artist. She's like, nope, but it looks cool. It looks like a bunch of tattoos I already have on myself, <laughs> to be honest. So I got no, like, all right. That. Well, this. Yes. Awesome. See, this is why she doesn't get that shirt. That's why she, she doesn't need it's a shirt. Already, she's already, it's already on. Yeah, she's it's already on. Yeah. She, she can't take it off. Mm -hmm. mm. I miss you. Your shirt is spectacular. Um, this when I first saw this shirt, I thought of Black Sabbath. I was like, oh, Black Sabbath, cool. But it's not Black Sabbath. It is Bach Sabbath, and it is the Hell's Rock six point six six percent of ABV. Uh, hey, Vivi, a boy, who's stupid, this guy here. Uh, another coffee, please, Mr. Saito. Uh, yes, um, yes, this is the Blue Stallion Brewing Company in Lexington, Kentucky. Fucking awesome. Dude, Alan, thank you so much for these shirts. Then eventually, we are going to meet up in your hometown, and we're going to go to your sake bar. Oh, there's a sake shirt. Where's the sake shirt? Somewhere here. Yes, yes, there's a sake shirt. He works at a sake oh, brewing company. Yeah, I think it's called Saki Saki Saki. There oh, it is. Yeah, there it is. Know. It's cool. It's like a an Atari like, design. Yeah. Saki Saki Saki. Oh, and was it the, the Void that, Saki Company? That's another Missy thing, the Void. The Void. That one was supposed to go to Jeremy, but Jeremy's been slacking. Do you want this? <laughs> yeah, I'm always. I, 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 I like the nice. Can, can, can you turn it around? So I, I, I really like the font because it's like the old can school. Can I turn around? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Wait, did you say can? Oh, turn the shirt. Okay, around. No, no, the shirt. Put, like, it, put say, in the say, camera. Put in the camera. See, because I like I like this font because it's like a retro pixel from like you know four bit to eight bit. Yeah, it's Atari. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's cool. I like that. Suck it, suck it, suck it. Suck it to me, baby. Yeah. This is pretty dope. That is amazing. Okay, that's your shirt. Yeah. Sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> you flaked again. Snooze, you lose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he does have a bar, and his bar is really awesome. So, and one of these days, we're going to go to his bar. And we're going to snooze all day, too. So, all right. No, we're going to booze all day. Oh, uh, yeah, probably, most likely. Yes. Um, but not today. It's very early in the morning. Actually, no, now after all this fucking setup, it's actually 11 o'clock in the morning. We should have booze now. Fuck. You know, when we got here, we were like, God, it's so early. Coffee time. But now we're just like, shit. Okay, booze later. Booze later. Right now, caffeine. Black crack. Oh, man. So um, let's see here. On this most wonderful episode, um, Tom, you contacted me earlier in the week and you yeah. said, Johnny, I've got some news for you. Some crazy shit's happened to me. I got to be on the podcast. I got to tell the faders, and I only assumed that you knocked up your wife, girlfriend, neighbor, boss, or I don't know, some somebody in the park or something. Yeah, because I've been a busy bee like that. Yes, yes. Because I want to set a prime example of uh, good behavior for my son. Absolutely. So I, <laughs> that's just what I assumed, you know. I just assumed that's how you roll, you know. I'm joking. Just joking. Just joking. What is this crazy news that you have to tell us? Well, that's this, so important. This, this is already brewing. Because I think the last time I was brewing, on, love brewing. it. Yeah, brewing. That's brewing another story. But uh, yeah, when I was on here for the Christmas episode, a lot of this was brewing anyway. 
but I didn't want to just like run in here, be the special guest, and just like hijack the episode immediately. I was like, ah, it's fucking special. Just we'll hang out. We'll have some drinks. We'll keep it light and fun. Yeah. Yeah, we were too busy talking about church burnings and stuff. Church burnings, yeah. Christmas Day special. Good episode. Disclaimer, obligatory disclaimer. No churches were burned down in that episode. We think. Well, not in Tokyo. <laughs> not in Tokyo. Not in Tokyo. Not anywhere near us. Norway, maybe. maybe. No, possibly. Possibly, yeah, on the other side of the world. Okay. <laughs> So, Tom, you had this amazing news, this chaotic news, this devastating news. I don't know, some kind of news. So fill us in on this news. Uh, yeah, because, like, I quit my old job, which I actually liked, to do a new job. And I worked, got, got, got basically daycare with my little kids. got fired. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I just, how'd you know? Well, how did you know? Wait, from the, wait so the, the, all right, the last time you're on the show, not like the Christmas episode, but before that, when you're currently on the show uh, consistently, you had a job. Now, you got fired from that job or you quit that job? Uh, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Okay, okay. It's like in the middle. Okay, all right. And I know, I know you're going to tell me, dude, why'd you get fired from a job again? Like, yeah, that was going to be my question. Yeah, yeah there's a, <laughs> this is just straight fucked up. So let me like, wind it back. So like I joined this job. It's daycare for little kids and being an English teacher. And like, I am stupidly overqualified to do this job because A, I'm the only native speaker. I was one of two people that could speak Japanese well enough to do translation and interpretation. And C, so I, I run in there, I do this job and I get bitched out immediately by the fucking trainers that are supposed to be training me to do the job that are, that are younger, far less experienced and not even native speakers. So like already we're off to a bad start. And it wasn't just me. They put, a, put me into unwinnable situations where we get whacked out lesson plans that kids couldn't fucking do so if we change the lesson plan we'll get yelled at for not doing it correctly not following the lesson plan if we do the lesson plan we'll get pitched out for basically doing a bad lesson we've specifically said can't do it they're fucking three they're not they don't know like a dog's inside or outside the house they don't understand the shit okay yeah so, yeah off to a really bad start and there's fucking drama got all game of thrones whoa 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 got me. all right let's stop here Tom's in a room with a bunch of children and they got Game of Thrones. <laughs> not not, not, not with the kids. Not with the kids. The kids were actually great. I really liked a lot of them, but like it just got fucking weird. So let, let me tell you about some of the fucked up drama that that they had me do. Like already I have a way heavier workload than everybody else because they're like, oh, you can do translation, do some fucking translation. Oh, you can do this. And I'm sitting there doing fucking translation, slaving away on a computer. And I'm, I look around, everybody else has got nothing to do. They're just playing with their phones. And this job is fucking job. It's okay. I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm going to do it because like, I'm going to get a raise and a promotion next year, as they promised me. You, you, can, you can already see where this is going. But uh, no, no. <laughs> I have no idea. You just said it was Game of Thrones with a bunch of kids in the classroom. Pretty so. much. <laughs> so, like, their, their turnover rate is appalling. So, like, they had like one Brazilian lady who I liked and was a lot of fun. Was a very cool person. Like she got screamed at by one of the managers, and she she basically walked out in tears and never came back. So she just quit because she couldn't take it. Mm. And they fired the principal. They keep firing and rehiring the fucking goddamn principal of the school. Right? Isn't that the boss? Yeah. He's like, I quit. Yeah. No, there, there, there's, there's people above her, but like, yeah, they keep like nobody likes her. So they because I get apparently she's two faced. I don't give a shit because like she, I don't work with her and I just like fucking mind my own business. But like, they keep firing and rehiring her. So there's that. And here's here's where we start to get fucked up ter territory. They they want to open an international school. And but they don't know what the fuck they're doing. So they asked me to take my child all the way across Tokyo in the middle of a pandemic, pose as a potential customer, and go spy on another international <laughs> school. I'm not. I'm not sure if this is legal. It's certainly not ethical. I'm not even sure if that's legal. I think it's legal. Uh, it might be, but it, it's it's still a fucked up thing to do. To like you know, because we're supposed to be taking care of kids. Did your kid get paid? No, he did. Well, he got a free lunch. So he got. Oh, you <laughs> did it! You actually did it. He got a free lunch. I am ashamed to say that I I caved under pressure and actually fucking did it. <laughs> and, and, and then. And then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, I would never do that in a hundred years. Okay, I did it. You're like, it's so wrong. It's so unethical. It's, it's so fucking wrong. It's you got so a free lunch. You got paid, though. We went to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so did you do it on the snow day when it snowed in Tokyo? No, no, no. This is, this is months ago. This is actually the middle of summer. It was goddamn hot. 
Oh my God. And you spied. Did the kid have like, a little camera in his glasses? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did he have a lunchbox with like a recording machine yeah. in it? <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you should see because my, my, my kid who's normally really, really out, like really like well there outgoing, like, he, he even like at two years old, he can sense something's kind of fucked up. Yeah. So he's just like, he just gets to the other school, this like school, and he's just like looking around going, what the fuck is going on? Like, Daddy, you're a sellout. Yeah, I was a fucking major sellout, but I, I caved under pressure. And the fucked up thing, pressure. after I did this big favor for him, like two days later, they tried to give me a write up for poor performance or whatever bullshit. It's like, what, I just, your kid <laughs> fucked up? <laughs> I just did you a huge, I did something highly unethical and quite, again, quite possibly <laughs> illegal. And then th then two days later, they're like, yeah, thanks for doing that. Um, here's a write-up for poor performance. It's like, I went above and beyond like what any normal person sh should have to do. Show me where, the, where this shit is in my fucking contract. I don't think that's in your contract. Yeah, so like I thought about it and then I just like, I went, went in the next day and I lost it. I was like, no, All right. you, you got went Terminator again? Nah. You went not, Terminator not. on a company once, and that was really bad. It was really bad. But I, I walked in there, and I was like, you got two choices. This write-up ripped it up. I was like, I'm not signing this. This is bullshit. This goes away, and you can either you get two choices. You can fire me, or you can stay the fuck out of my way. Let, let those asshole, creepy managers are constantly yelling at me. Just let me do my job. I'm fucking good at it. Just leave me alone. And your boss said, it's what was the fire first me. option? It was either fire me or do that. And like, Surprisingly, they went okay, and they just stayed the fuck out of my way. So uh, things then then things got a lot better. I'm just like, okay, maybe I can actually continue with this job. Okay. Was like you know, things got a lot better. I got like you know responsibility. I got like you know, I was kind of like in charge of like a certain area of sector of it, and I was like, fine, things are going much better. Maybe they fucked up. Maybe this is kind of just screwed up. I'll I'll just let it go and we'll cool. continue. All right. So come by by after all this drama, after all the people that other people that have gotten quit. Or that had quit or gotten fired because this is a revolving thing. Their turnover is just appalling. Then, like mid November, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe this job ain't so bad. Blah, 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 blah. And like, I start talking to my wife, like, maybe we could go in, all in this. I could actually make it a career because, like, they fired all the management team. So, like, I'm the obvious choice for the manager because I've got, I'm the only native speaker and I've got by, by far the most experience. So, maybe we'll just continue maybe we could go all, all in on this mm. so like we, we were talking to moving to that place getting an apartment because it's where's that place it's kinky chill uh okay it's it's, it's, it's by sky tree it's just like a couple stops down from sky tree oh okay like, all right see sky tree oh, better wow. which is we researched it it's very nice like nakamega is excellent but it's, it's fucking goddamn expensive so like we could basically go out there and get the equivalent apartment or possibly even better for about half the price. Nice. And think about it. So I could walk my child to work and like, you know, cause they were good. They're willing to cut me a discount on their school. Mm -hmm. And so you get a great fucking in education at an international school. Good dude. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we we're like, we're, we're seriously considering going all in. Then some other stuff happened. Then like it came. Whoa. Then some other stuff happened. What is this other stuff? <laughs> Sexual harassment. No. <laughs> they uh they said okay we got we got an announcement so we're all we're all promised bonuses in, this, in our contract. They're like yeah we have a new system for figuring out the bonuses. We're just gonna give you a fraction of what we promised. I'm like excuse me what? So like my bonus I'm supposed to get a full month's pay for mm -hmm. a bonus mm -hmm. on top of my paycheck. Mm -hmm. And they said yeah we'll give you like a fourth or a fifth of that 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 should be cool not just to me to everybody. Wait, is it during the Christmas time? Yes. Like in National Lampoon's, yes. like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yes. This the is same thing happened to Clark Griswold. Yes. This is exactly what is going through my mind. I'm like, this is like fucking evil cartoon movie villain shit that you're pulling this. You're pulling this on goddamn Christmas. You're going to fucking short me on a bone. I see Christmas. <laughs> fucking goddamn motherfucking Christmas. Okay. So like, I was pissed. And like, I, I, I don't spit on me when you say I'm, this, I'm, I'm man. Excited. I'm not the enemy. <laughs> but, I'm a friendly over here. Oh, and be before that, they uh, this is another thing I did wrong where I get fucked up. Not illegal, oh. but like, uh, uh -oh. they, they fired one of the managers who I didn't like, and she was fucking. She was a screeching harpy, and she was terrible at her job. I didn't like her, but she's a harpy. <laughs> harpy. Oh, she was a screeching harpy. Oh, okay, harpy. I don't even know that. She was a screeching yeah, fucking harpy, is. and she okay. caused me a bunch of problems. But like, provided she stayed out of my way, I didn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. 
but like they just like right after halloween they just basically decided to fire her so she couldn't collect her bonus and like she i i have some disagreements with her but she she was in charge of the halloween program she worked her ass off to make a good halloween program Mm -hmm. so right after that they're like they kind of got forced she got forced out because basically everybody in her group said if she's not gone we're gonna walk out Mm -hmm. they fired a single mother right before she could collect her fucking bonus because she got forced out so this is is some of the drama we're fucking dealing with then like the the manager tells me he goes yeah i know you didn't like her so you're probably happy like no, I, I, she's a, I, I didn't like her, but she's a single mother. I didn't want anybody to get fired. I just want her, she should not be in charge of anything. I just want her to be demoted and her to shut the fuck up. That's what I wanted. But nope, they fucking booted her. Well, you got what you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't want her to be, you, I know I'm an asshole sometimes, but my heart isn't made of stone. I didn't want her to be fired, just uh-huh. demoted and just not in charge of anything because she's not clearly not a leader. So and then, 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 the, then the manager comes up, oh yeah, this other guy that you had some disagreements don't worry about him the next step is to fire him it's like why are you fucking telling me this wait you know a lot of people right now it's really difficult to get people to work in companies especially international people because the borders have been closed for god knows since when and the thing is it's just like if they're firing all these people i mean how are they hiring people it's, i don't know they just keep hiring new people they, it's an english school and they still haven't yet to hire another goddamn native english speaker oh these are all like non-japanese people are they're, they're, like, they're not they're, they're non-japanese foreigners so majority of them are from the philippines who speak english good and they can do their job and they won't complain so they're they're fine uh one, one of the other one of the guys is from nigeria okay all right, all right, all right, spain right, right. france like fucking whatever awesome okay so they, they fucking fired her and then this is another re- thing i did that was duplicitous and doing a bad thing like i was the one that translated the letter that said you're fired and they did, they did it really dirty they said okay you uh if you don't sign this agreement this nda that says you're not going to work for another a, a competitor of ours you're not allowed to use anything that you learned or any lessons that you made for the company you're not allowed to use that other schools just really bullshit stuff they can not force if you don't sign this we're not paying you your severance fee there's another really shitty thing. And again, I think that's I, illegal. I'm pretty sure it is. And I, I was duplicitous with this. Again, I, I caved under pressure and I was the one that translated that. And I should not have. <laughs> you are very unethical. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I know. I'm, right now, I'm a fucking terrible person. I got, I got freaked out because of the pandemic and all this other fucking bullshit. So then all this happens. And then, like, then it comes time to the bonus and they start shirking us around the bonus. And like, almost let it go i was really close to saying fuck it just shut your mouth and then like then i had the weekend to think about it had a couple drinks i'm like nah fuck this Mm -hmm. so i went back into the place on monday and i was like i want to talk to you like the head guy i'm like pull up the contract says right here i get a bonus full bonus want it period and then he got fucking pissed off and started screaming at me in front of everybody else in the office i was like do you want to go in another room and talk about this no so we went back and forth and I basically said, it is here in the contract in black and white. If you don't pay me this, we can go right down to the government office and talk about this and see what they have to say. And literally, fine, fuck you, you're a greedy asshole. I'll fucking pay you your full bonus, but you're the only one that's getting it in front of everybody. So now everybody in the office knows, knows that I am the only one that got a full bonus. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that might have that obviously damaged my standing in the company and it damaged, <laughs> damaged relationships with co-workers. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> so you weren't invited to the Christmas party, I'm assuming. Uh, I was not. <laughs> I, I wasn't until I was, but guess what Guess what happened? Dun, dun, dun. Christmas came up, the Christmas program came up. I was asked to dress as Santa Claus, which I fucking did. And I fucking rocked that shit because I'm awesome Santa Claus. You then, are. Then everything just went back to normal. They're like, oh, ha, ha. He's, he's good. He's Santa Claus. He's fucking cool. Nobody fucks with Santa Claus on Christmas. I'm telling you. That's it. All you did was dress as Santa and everyone just. Well, I did, and I did an awesome job, though. He said. So, really? So nobody like full metal jacket no. after that? You didn't get fucked up? No. No. Oh, like, the, the soap. soap. Oh, yeah. Not the soap. No. No, but like it was. It was Not yet. I was going to go there. <laughs> and then. Still the season. Then that happened. And then uh, what was it like? Yeah, then like a couple of days after that, like I think it was like the last day or two I was in there, which I put in for vacation time because I just wanted, I had vacation time saved up. I just wanted a couple of extra days because we, we only got six days off for Christmas. That's it. And Christmas and New Year. It's not bad. 
Tokyo has some yeah, had some bullshit, dude. I, 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 Japan, I used to get a month off. <laughs> yeah, oh well, God. I mean, hey, it's not normal. Okay, it's not normal. Well, yeah, it was a fucking good job. But anyway, I was yeah, fired in two weeks. <laughs> so anyway, like, so I walked in there, and then like they basically, they basically just like fired me. Wait, they fired you when you came back from your vacation? How did they do it? They said, "Tom, please have a seat." No, actually, just stand. Uh, you can just walk around and just leave. <laughs> You're like, what? Well, no, because like the company, pre- the little company president came in and said, "Here's like a nice bottle of uh, was it Chardonnay?" Oh, well, that's nice. At work, and I was like, "That's pretty cool." <laughs> and after all your bullshit, because like they gave like, oh, that's called the kiss of death. Yeah. Was it Chardonnay? Yeah, it was Chardonnay. Oh, they gave me the kiss. Oh, dude, never accept that. No. So they they gave me that. Uh huh. And even before that, they, they don't even like the only like the 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 big boss like the company president she only knows my name no she doesn't know anybody else's name so that's that's kind of good so maybe mm-hmm. i'm special or whatever wow but like yeah so i did that and then like drank that had a pretty good weekend i was actually with you guys on christmas that weekend because christmas is a saturday so yeah. we're hanging out and then like i did the podcast with you cruise back you know cooked a like nice like five or six course meal for my uh was like my family came down like uh, my mother-in-law my brother-in-law and like you know obviously my wife and kid with it that was cool then i went up drinking for the rest of the weekend then went back up, back into work and they said you're drunk and i'm like uh, i haven't drunk today so basically they said i smelled of alcohol and they basically said and then, then well you were gonna play with kids <laughs> yeah well, here's the thing. I wasn't drunk. I was just hung over. <laughs> I might, I might, the, you know what I used to do is I used to have like the, was it the series of strong medicine, medicinal uh, uh, body wash. It just fucking kills any smell on you. Yeah. I ran out of that. So I was just using normal <laughs> bar soap. So I might have smelled like booze, but I was, I, I was, I swear I was not drinking like, you know, before I was teaching kids. <laughs> but had they done that, listen. <laughs> had they done that wouldn't they like I don't, one of them like i don't know called the cops just sent me home immediately in the morning they just said eh, just go fucking work why would out. they call the cops it's legal. Wouldn't, they, wouldn't they tell me to get the fuck out if i was if i was wasted in front of kids which i again i wasn't i was just hung over <laughs> well so right. so they stayed there all day and taught classes and then at the end of the day they're like man you're fired so i'm like, coming in hung over <laughs> yeah basically and i'm like well, oh again, it's 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 my fault for being stupid because like they they were pro- basically they were gonna fire me anyway for, for raising a ruckus about the bonus. Uh-huh. They, they were they were gonna they were gonna find something. Well, they found something good. Yeah, <laughs> so they, they found something. I, I gave a reason. Like I could have hung in there for maybe I don't know a couple couple more weeks, maybe another month or two. Who knows? It was in the car. So I was basically. like, fuck it. And here's here's another fucked up thing they did so i got into it with the manager i was like yeah fucking you can fire me but i know all rights and like i'll go down to the government office and i'll fucking you guys are gonna be in some trouble once i report some of the shit you've been doing I'm like what oh but there's i don't want to get into like the, the legals but it's highly suspect they're probably doing a bunch of illegal shit with the, with the payroll obviously not paying people what they promised in the contract is illegal and some, some of the other stuff i have like I can't prove, but I have suspicions about. Well, you don't. You're not. You didn't say the company's name, so you can say anything. You say like, "Yes, they're trafficking children to Hokkaido." I mean, it's not that bad. Well, it's not that bad, but it's, close. it's just you know illegal, Why? illegal stuff with payroll. And I've heard like well, that's what the reason one of the Japanese teachers quit is because she found out some illegal stuff. They're okay. Really illegal all right. Stuff. All right. Well, just don't say the name of the company, and we're all good. Okay, so you got fired, and then now where are you? Now, now you're podcasting well, again. The- Sign up for the Patreon. Yeah. Tom needs to pay rent. Yeah. yeah, but here's the thing. So I got to sort it out with the government office, and I got, like, you know, appropriate severance fee coming, and blah, blah, blah. Cool. Yeah, and then, I don't know, man. Like, then I just, I, I, I get, I, again, I fucked up. So after, after I was fired, I went home. They called my wife and bitched her out. Ooh, that should be illegal. Why? Because they're assholes. That's- no, you know, because it's fucked up, and I'm just, I'm sitting there thinking, wait a second, I didn't give him my wife's like contact, I didn't give him my phone number. Then, then, then I realized like they have you fill out emergency, emergency contact. Yeah. Oh. So they went into that and called my wife, bitched her out. She, I come home and she's cool. fucking crying, oh and I was seething God. fucking. Oh, pissed. your poor wife. She's such a one. Oh, is there a cat? There's a yeah. cat. I thought it was like Tom, stop <laughs> touching me there. <laughs> come on, I know it's been a while since I've seen you, but come on, dude. Get your nails off my <laughs> so it's your cat <laughs> all this and then, then, then like my, my wife is like upset and like blah 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 she, like she actually she was cool with the whole situation she was like yo 
you weren't perfect, but this company's fucked up. I'm glad you're not working there. I'm glad we're not sending our kids to school there. Fuck these guys. And yeah. she, she's been pretty supportive of it. Mm. So she's been she's been really cool about the situation. She said, like, I don't know, in Japanese, like, she said, this is a very low-level company that she shouldn't continue working for, which is, translate to polite Japanese, it's like, yo, fuck this place. They're a bunch of douchebags. Don't ever fucking go anywhere near them. Okay, cool. Yeah, so where are you now? So, and then, and then after that, so I had the nice thing. I was like, ah, fuck it. You know, I just had, had a couple drinks and then just kind of forgot about it. And just like, I was already searching for jobs because like, remember, I, it's, I won't get into another long story, but like a couple of years ago, I worked for a company that went bankrupt. And it and the music company. Uh, yeah, it was a music company. And mm-hmm. like, it took me two and a half, I'm sorry, a year and a half to get 60% of my salary of two and a half months on a manager's salary. And like, I had no fucking income coming in. It was just, it really got to me. I felt really depressed. I felt fucking worthless. Cause I, here I am with a newborn child. I'm trying my best to like support my family and do the right thing. And I did the right thing. The company went belly up and it wasn't just that they, they went bankrupt and couldn't pay us. They literally hired a team of lawyers and threw up literally every fucking possible roadblock for me to like they hired a team of lawyers just to pay you four g's they probably lost a lot of money in that situation well it's not not even that not even that but another thing about them is like they're one of the one of the head people there was a a, basically a co-owner is a famous musician who's i'm not gonna say his name but like he's a easily a multi-millionaire he easily could have snapped his fingers okay okay okay. yeah we're not gonna say who it is we're not gonna say who it is but if you know the band Oh, I, 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 so, White Snake. It might be the lead singer. <laughs> I, I so want to fucking say. It. See, I so want to fucking say it. It but might I, be. A, because, she's only seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen for teaching your children, but they mean a lot to me. Okay. Anyway. Okay, but but because of that situation. Still a little bit, thank you. I'll, I'll take a little bit of that. Tom needs a lot. He's been talking for the last thirty minutes. <laughs> because I can't even throw my jokes. Half my jokes are in my back pocket, by the way. Because of that, I promised myself if anything ever fucked up, because like I've, I've, I've worked for companies that have gone out of business, but me getting paid on time what I was owed was never a fucking issue. Before. Yeah. And the entire time I've been in Japan, it's never been an issue. Yeah, yeah. So when that company starts screwing up and saying, ah, don't worry, we'll get it to you in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, you know, turn, turn it into months, turn it into a year and a half. I promised myself if, an, if another company ever fucking pulled that bullshit where they were late with money, or didn't pay on time, or sorry, didn't pay the full amount that I was fucking immediately going to search for other jobs, and which is what I did because they were a week late with my bonus, and it took me fucking basically bitching at them, threatening legal action to get the full amount. Yeah. So already I was I was applying for jobs anyway. I was like, you know what, fuck it. This job's kind of demanding anyway, so like I'll just I fucking chill out and take my separate severance fee, live off savings, and my wife understands the situation. So like I was already searching for other jobs, and I had interviews lined up and probably some good stuff's coming it looks likely but uh i thought this is all going to be over so i went on vac- vacation did a fair amount of drinking to get it on my system was kind of depressed and then i kind of bounced back hmm. wanted fucking my wife wanted to go out like for a bicycle right on crashing my fucking bicycle not because i was drunk but, again i was hung over but i wasn't <laughs> drinking that day <laughs> Tom, God, the way damn. you the way you drink being hung over <laughs> kind of is drunk yeah, yeah. <laughs> you but crash I mean, your bicycle actually it's that's that's not a good thing you've got a huge his, his bicycle is like the harley davidson of bicycles yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's, it's a tank. like J- johnny couldn't ride it either. it's just it'd be way too it's big. really big it's, yeah. it's ridiculous it's, a fucking it's, tank. it's like the fat boy have you seen terminator 3 that's that's the bicycle but with no engine it's like muscle power it's kind of so, cool so I did, that. I got, that. did you I got, kill somebody no <laughs> And the, the really sad thing is, it was just like, it was like, I was following my wife because I didn't know where the park was. So she, she takes like the, the, my boy in the, in the baby basket. And I was just like following her. So we went to the park, we played around, it was fine. And got back on the bicycle and we we're just, I was going down a hill and like, I would look down to like shift the gears because it's a really nice, like with all the gear shifts. Mm-hmm. And then like somebody left some trash out and just like fucking boom. <laughs> So wait, you hit the trash, you, your bike <laughs> slipped, you fell, yeah. you did a 360 Bang, there. I my shoulder, my knee, like still kind of hurt a little bit, like right here. Like, You're a tough guy, you'll be fine, walk it up. Yeah, but well, that, that's the thing. How's the well, bike? The, uh, bike's okay, actually. Okay, good. I thought you were going to see you totaled the bike. I was oh, like, no. you got hit by a car. <laughs> it, it dinged up. I think it might, uh, the axle might, a few things might be, need to be readjusted. Well, let me take a look at it. I could probably fix it. Yeah, you probably could. Yeah. You're, you're, you're good with bicycles. I would, I would much rather have like a BMX like you have. 
Yeah, Other BMXs that, are great, man. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're the AK-47 of bicycles, they don't break and they, they last forever. It doesn't matter any kind of like weather condition. If it's like either mud, sand, snow, it's still going to go, man. You can't No, because I remember ass. this is a couple of years ago. You showed up at my place and there's a liquor store downstairs. You showed up and said, hey, man, I'm on my bike. Just want to hang out and have a few beers because I got some time. I said, yeah, cool. I was not on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was but not like, on my bike. I yeah. was walking my bike. Yes, you were walking your bike, but I, I, I hopped on your bike before I was drinking, and I was like, "What?" While you were going in to get some beers, and I was like, "It's kind of a nice bike." So I just like decided to take it for a ride around the block, and you just like I come back and you look, look and like, "Did he just steal my bike?" And I'm like, oh, sorry, dude. It's a nice bike. I just I couldn't resist. I just had to take a lap, do a lap around the block. Like, oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So BMXs are fucking cool. Mm. So I did all this fucking shit. And then crash my bike and this and then blah, 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 blah search, job searching, blah, blah, blah. 2022! And I went to the appropriate government office so that we got to file the paperwork and I know my rights, so I'll get my severance fee, blah, 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 so that's fine. And then like, I thought it was going to be over and it was going to be done with. And then like a couple of days ago, I got a mail from the, the Nigerian guy who was one of the other managers, basically the only manager who hasn't been fired. Hmm. And it was like, dude, I'm in a lot of trouble, man. Like, think they're going to fire me. I was like, yeah, I kind of told you that they, they were looking to fire you. So he was like, okay. Like he recorded a conversation like stealthily and he sent it to me. I was like, that's pretty fucked up. So I start, we, 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 we get to talking back and forth online. And then like, he goes, yeah, so they, they, they mandatorily gave me a couple of days off. I'm supposed to go back there in, in there on Wednesday. And they said, I can, because he doesn't speak Japanese, I can bring someone to uh, whoever I feel comfortable with to help interpret. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be that person? And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Oh my God, that sounds awesome. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, it's, it hasn't happened yet. It's, it's in the works. It's on uh, Wednesday, I believe, 11, 11 o'clock when the crew's in there. I was like, all right, meet me outside the building so they don't think I'm going to fucking bang on the door and be screaming at them. You should wear a suit. Yeah, I, just, I, I will. I will. I'm you got to wear a suit. I'm going to yeah. wear a fucking suit. And I'm just going to walk in there and just be like, hi, guys, what's up? But the thing is, when you record it, you can't go stealth mode because that's technically kind of illegal. Mm -hmm. What you have to say is, oh, yes, we're recording this as part of our protocol mm -hmm. and it's for our records. And if yeah. you do that, then you can record it and then it gets, it's held up in law. It's yeah. held up in law. I, mean, I need more coffee. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, but we need a drink. We need the, a real the whole, the whole thing is like a couple of things about this whole story. Like this guy, I had a, when, when we first started working, he's working together i fucking hated him he was one of the guys that was screaming at me mm. and he was wrong in a lot of stuff but okay. like, right. i started to realize that like him like me and a lot of the other people were given unrealistic realistic expectations put under a lot of pressure yeah he cracked he lashed out that's not good but like since then you know after a couple months we got used to each other we're actually we're pretty cool with each other yeah i love nigerians yeah. now okay hold on so, a second Tom. Tom, yeah. we've been talking for quite a bit so now let me just consult with missy about this whole situation we're gonna get back to you okay all right, all right. okay <clears throat> hello faders thank you very much for tuning in to this special episode of got fitted japan i am your host johnny and when i'm not creating podcast there's nothing more than I enjoy than to be in my studio or at a cafe or in a park somewhere with a hot cup of coffee creating art. I love art. Art is my life. It really is. And I think art changes how I feel. It changes the way I think. It opens my mind to different ideas. And when I have a big piece that I created on my wall, it changes the environment of the room. It changes how people think when they're in the room. Art on your walls makes your life more enjoyable and more creative it makes you more creative i think art is the best thing in the world for me and i would love to share my artwork with you so if you have a couple of minutes please come on down to thespiltink.com that's my website my artwork is there if you want to purchase my artwork you can purchase it there or if you want you can go down to my etsy page i have a lot of work there that's very reasonably priced or if you'd like to commission me to make some art for you, if you have something in mind that's very special for you, it would be my pleasure and my honor to create something for you. Art is my life, and it's my gift, and I would love to share my gift with you. Please enjoy some of these other paintings that I've created, and I look forward to meeting you sometime soon on the internet. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for tuning into Got Fitted Japan. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Thank you. If you're gonna get your fit on, you gotta get your fit on in style. And that's why I use Ghost Town Palmade. 
Ghost Town Palmade is the number one badass palmade, and I practice what I preach. When I leave this house, if I'm not wearing a hat, if I'm not wearing a lid, I'm wearing Ghost Town Palmade in my hair. This stuff is amazing. It smells good, it looks good, and it feels good. Ghost Town Palmade, badass palmade. And let me tell you one thing, it comes in a lid. That's pretty badass. This whole world is so nerfed up these days. Everything is plastic and pink, but not Ghost Town Palmade. This stuff is a man's palmade, and it is hardcore. It's so hardcore, it's from Oakland, California. Oakland, California. That's right. Ghost Town Palmade. Get your bait on in style. Proper. This is pretty fucked up. He got fired for the seventh time in two years. Seventh time in two Something years. Something like that. It's been a while. Yeah, Tom, don't say anything. So, <laughs> I don't know. And it's always from like the same kind of a company. It's like an English school for kids, English school for kids. And he always knows more than the executives. He speaks English and Japanese. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? Mm -mm. Probably not. I'm saying he should start his own company. Oh, I see. Okay. Like if he starts his own company, he's the boss. He can't get fired. And all he has to do is he's already got like all the lessons planned for like the kids. All he needs to do is just find a location, get some advertising and um, yeah, just hit the ground mm -hmm. running and start his own business. Yeah. Let's use my house. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, see, I, you were not thinking what I was thinking at all. I was thinking like a warehouse in Kawasaki or something. That, that, that might be actually cool because of Missy over here, you're a budding tattoo artist, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. like, so you've obviously got quite a bit of ink, so maybe that could be an incentive. Yeah, like, hey, free tattoos. Yeah, tattoo parlor upstairs, uh, downstairs. We yeah. got like the devil worshiping room upstairs. Yeah, that's true. Right? Family yeah. friendly, by the mm -hmm. way. Yes, very. Yeah, well, Tom, you, she's going to fix your ink. Here, show us your ink. Oh, oh it's a bit giant. Oh. <laughs> 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 1993? Oh, my God. Oh, it's 19, 1998, actually. Wow, well, yeah. yeah. It, 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 she needs a little bit of love. That it? used to be black, right? Yeah, it used to be black. Oh, you could put, like, an upside-down crucifix mm -hmm. right over here, a pentagram yeah, over there, maybe a penis right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude. Well, it's just, like, for... First, I just like just want to touch. Was it. that supposed to be the Batman symbol? I only got one. I got one other one. Florida Lee here, and then you can see this is a. Uh, she needs some loving too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that today. Yeah, yeah. I'll record it. Oh, sign up for the Patreon. Holy smokes. Oh, speaking of Patreon, Mike, we're gonna hook you up. I know you're listening, so uh, yes, we're gonna hook you up. The package is in the mail. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, what do you think of his story? That's that's pretty intense. Is that the everything? That was the end. Was that just the beginning? Was that the preview? Well, I don't know. Like, like, yeah, but like it, the the thing with the like the Nigerian guy asking me basically being going and being his interpreter, interpreter and advocate. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm probably the best person to ask because I can do interpretation. Also, I know all the laws. I know the situation. How how fucked they are. So, but this is one thing. I just I, let, me, let me close it off. I know I've been eating up a lot of airtime, and I apologize for that. I just, I'm, no, no, no. I'm, just, I'm really, I'm really like happy to be back on the podcast and be like potting again. Yay! Yay. We love you. <clears throat> Go for it, because I mean I'm struggling today. Anyway, I, th this is another story I can quickly go over it in a bit. Yeah, That's sure. Why I struggled to talk today, but anyway, please. Was it okay. what we did last night? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, 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 I would love, I would love to, I, I would love to hear your story. Just one or two no. minutes for me to finish up, and then okay, yeah, then, yeah, then, then, then I can. I can. I will happily hand it over to you. I don't want to hear my story. I just okay. want to do. Okay, if you don't want to, if you're, if you're not in a sharing mood, so it's okay. I am in a sharing mood. Please, yeah, please, please. Don't go for it. I mean, it's hard to shut you up sometimes. <laughs> you know, but like since I've had some time off to reflect about like past behavior and what's been going on in my life and the world, pandemic, my family, blah 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 blah. Like this Nigerian guy who asked me to do this, I easily, I, I, I got to turn him down. I said, no, nope, I don't want any any more to do with this. Like bloody bloody blah. blah, blah. But I've reflected because I've, I've, I've stated a couple of times in the story, I was not the good guy in the story. I did some things that I should not have done that were unethical. But I am thinking, I am remembering back to a couple of years ago when like when life was simpler and there were a lot of times, most of the time I used to do things not because they were in my own self-interest. This, this is helping him out is kind of in my self-interest as well. Mm -hmm. But I used to do things not because they were in my self-interest and not because they were the easy thing to do but because they were the right thing to do and i've had some time to think about this and this is the right thing to do this guy needs help despite any any mis misgivings or any arguments we got we, we got into the past he's a good guy i feel and like i should help him 
Okay, cool. I've, got, I've got fucking time, so I, I just want to get back to that going forward. Like, if you do something <laughs> wrong, doing a right, like doing something right, doesn't automatically balance the scales. But if you do something wrong, you have an opportunity to sit down and reflect about what you've done wrong and how you can do better in the future. See, Tom's a parent. <laughs> yeah. He's got a kid. That's now he's that's, this way. That's part of it, though, because I don't want to like I don't want to be an asshole in front of my kid. I want like I want to show my you know my kid good behavior. Can we call it the title of the show? I don't want to be an asshole. <laughs> sure, if, if you like, if you like, but like, when you... <laughs> side note, write that down, you motherfucker. <laughs> That's why I don't have kids. Oh, oh God. I, we got I, 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 never, I, I don't blame you. I never wanted kids either. But, you know, my, my wife essentially, basically, she wanted kids and like. Well, you've got a good kid. I love yeah, your she, kid. My, my kid's cool. His like, kid's really awesome. We I, go to I, the convenience store and he doesn't run up to the candy or the toys. He runs up to the beer section. He grabs a beer. He's like, Daddy, beer. And I was like, you got him trained like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He'll bring you beer and everything. It's true. No, no, he, he does, but like, no, but like, I, I felt I had to have, like, I, I owed that to my wife because she essentially killed me with kindness. You got a great she wife. Yeah. She's a doll. She's, yeah. she's cool. Everybody loves her. She's, she's been good to me so like you know she killed me with kindness and I, I, I couldn't say no to her when she said i want a kid i'm like i oh, gotta do it but, i think i yeah. killed a guy i just like kindness and so, okay, so, so, actually yeah. i think he committed suicide anyway continue no <laughs> dark i got dark real quick <laughs> we'll see if that's right for later yeah. but uh yeah so when my kid gets a little bit older and like a little bit wiser when he's able to understand i wanted to say two things about daddy my, my, one, my daddy is a badass, and two, my daddy always does the right thing. Always. <laughs> That's debatable, but you're doing the right thing now. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, all right, maybe I had a couple of missteps. Things got fucked up with the pandemic. You know, job situation, bloody blah, 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 a bunch of fucking drama. I just want to get back, back on the right path. That's right, and don't we all. Okay, all right, Tom, thank okay, you so yep. much. Um, yep, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm done. done. I'm cashed out. Like, over to you. Let, Let me just make sure. to take the floor. That's fine. Let me, um, all right. Well, okay, okay, all right. We are recording. I just had to make sure because I did not want to go through that again. Um, <laughs> Twitch. No fun if I have to tell again. Yeah, Twitch. We're on Twitch, but we're like an hour and a half late doing Twitch because we had so many fucking technical difficulties. So if you if you sign up for Twitch, if you're on Twitch and you want to watch the show with us on Twitch, um, we're so sorry that we're an hour and a half late doing this. But um, we yeah, suck. yeah, we suck. <laughs> <laughs> Missy, what is your was your story about last night? All we do is just like hang out and talk, like you, me, and the missus, and drink Coca Cola Zero because we didn't have any booze. Yeah, we're kind of sober right now, just for like the time being. No, I'm more I'm... than sober. We're caffeinated up. Uh, yeah. That coffee's strong. I know, dude. I make it it's super strong. Jittery. I make I make strong coffee, dude. You're supposed to put in two scoops. I do six. I, that's why I call it black crack, dude. When you get it, it's as dark as sin. That is how Johnny rolls. That's how I roll. No, I'm not even supposed to be drinking caffeine, but I started because I quit alcohol. So yeah, for stress management situations. Well, we didn't. We didn't. All right, let's 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 establish this. We didn't quit alcohol. What we're doing is we're just taking a break because like the last couple of weeks were so fucked up. I drank two cases of beer and two bottles of wine in five days, which was awesome. But um, yeah, my tolerance is so high, and also I've got an art show. Actually, you and I have an art show coming up. Yes, Um, Faders and Tom, you got to come. Your friends are going to be there. Mutual friends. Uh, we've got a show at Gallery Mosto, M U no M O S T O, in Guy and Mai in Tokyo, and it is on February fifth and sixth. If you're in the Tokyo area, definitely show up. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. There's going to be my work, Missy's work, and like five other amazing artists who are going to be showing their artwork, and it's going to be spectacular. I've got to create thirty paintings in three weeks. I. Yeah, I've got so much work to do. I don't have time to drink, dude. I have no time to be hung over. I could do a Jackson Pollock where I just get wasted and just dump it on a canvas. But I, I, I've got some ideas and I want to do some really cool shit. So yeah, so alcohol right now is cool. Uh, I can go to that. You should bring definitely my, go to that. Bring my kid. Yeah, I'm definitely bring your kid. It's going to be a great time, dude. <laughs> Um, so what, is that what you want to talk about or something? Well, no, no, I was just going to say like since Christmas till today, I've been having these things happening to me, like um, I struggle to talk, I get the shakes, um, just insane, ridiculous things, right? Yeah, so, I, I've been there before. I, yeah, I, yeah, I understand. Well, yeah, no, you're I, on the right I, podcast, Missy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, that I've had the DTs before, but, but this was like something completely like beyond that. Like my brain, like eggs is cracked and fried, like, oh my God, what the fuck's going on with me sort of situation right and then and then i got a facial tick and everything 
And then so like I went to the doctor and then they're like, okay, you know, but you know, you've been drinking heavily drinking for fucking, you know, daily drinker for over a decade at this point. But like, has something new happened in, in your life? Have you had any changes? Started a podcast with these assholes. <laughs> yeah, no, these like, assholes just showed up my door and won't leave. <laughs> it's, uh, well, you know, they, they're like, you know, major life changes, you know? So I was like, well, I mean, do you have like, fucking time to listen to my major life changes so today today is uh the one year anniversary exactly of uh my husband leaving me so um yeah 365 days ago today um which was also my wedding anniversary so he left me on my wedding anniversary oh that's that's (laughs) Yeah, I can, I can I can see how that might sting a bit. Yeah, it's hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so I had no idea that anything was wrong at all. So it was it was a little bit of a shock because I thought everything was fine. Yeah, it was that was crazy. Last night we we're just talking about that. We we're just sitting around and it's like Missy, me, and my missus, and we're all just hanging out. And Missy's like, yeah, you know, it was around this time when you know when I got the whole divorce thing or whatever. And 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 my wife is like. Well, today's the 16th. So it was like midnight. It was past midnight. This is like, what the fuck? <laughs> today's the day, you know? So, yeah. Today was the day that it was a wrap. And then what, what's that song? Like, da, 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 So we did that da, da, last da, night. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the beginning of the darkest uh, year of my entire life. That was really the beginning of everything that could possibly go wrong. And today's the ending yeah. of it. Yeah. Today, today's the ending. Today's yeah. the yeah. ending. Yeah. You got a podcast, you got friends to hang out with. Yeah. yeah. Baby steps, things will get better maybe for you. I think. Baby steps. Oh, yeah. We got baby. strong coffee right now, which means we're not completely wasted, which means, I mean, it's still fairly early. It's before noon, which means we have the whole day to do all sorts of cool stuff together. We got Scrabble over there, Monopoly over there. Dude, she's got a video game arcade. <laughs> Oh, oh, I do. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's, I saw that in the corner hanging out. <laughs> so anyway, but that was that was just I mean that was like the the fucking like first day, you know. And after that, like, I mean something bad happened every single day. So it's like three hundred sixty five bad things happened at least from that day till till now. You have the black cat so, following you around. I She's got three of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. bitch, I got three. Where's yeah. Disco? She's got a white one too. Disco. Uh, yeah, Disco. Her, her cats are cool. They're super friendly. So oh, I love her so cats. So there was that, you know, and um, I mean, it was just like, you know, like, have you ever had something like that happen to you when you're like so excited and so happy to like have like a nice wedding anniversary dinner and then the, the news hits you and then your soul just exits your body? I'm trying to make a joke out of this, but it's really hard. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep the comedy train moving. Especially uh, since she's being poetic about it too. Well, yeah. as I said before, since you know it's been officially one year as yeah. of today, yeah. it, it's today is like the first day of mm-hmm. the rest of your life, literally. Yeah. So, no, so I mean, right? the dark is over. No, I mean I'm I'm happy. I'm just like massively fucked up somehow, and I think it's shell shock. Mm, right ptsd yeah so i mean because that i mean that day i was already fucking like um i i couldn't even talk right i just i just sat there as everything was like in slow motion like fucking like watching like a car crash and i'm just sitting there and finally after like like minutes of just like i can't talk i'm like finally the first thing i said was was like waiter something right and i'm like how many martinis can you serve me at once at this table sort of situation so they bring whatever so i'm like drinking drinking quietly and um you know i was wearing my best two-piece dress as i got up to like go to the bathroom um my fucking high heels got stuck on the fucking bottom part of my skirt and pulled it down and i you know i was drunk so i didn't realize it i ended up showing my cunt in front of you know, <laughs> everybody at a five-star restaurant it, it, it was it was beautiful but wait wait wait, 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 it was in Florida though, right? It was in Florida. Yeah. Typical. <laughs> Typical. It was in Florida. You'll fit right in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Like, Florida woman. <laughs> that's good. 
Florida <laughs> Florida Florida <laughs> woman shows his cunt in five star restaurant. Oh, oh yeah. In other news, <laughs> diners just keep on dining because they think it's just part of Florida's natural charm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean that night I had to get it um carried out of the rest. My business partner had to like carry me um. <laughs> really he's a good guy yeah i was just like i i had died that night so i was a corpse that had to be carried upstairs i you know i, I blame your ex-husband because that's kind of sadistic like all right it's her anniversary we're at a five-star review or five-star uh, restaurant and uh here send these papers you know yeah and it's like oh it's like oh you know it's anniversary so let's exchange presents like here's my present for you shoves the divorce papers across the table you're like eh, fuck this is not gonna be a very good night is it waiter yeah yeah you know what Check, please that that's pretty messed up but as i said as i said twice before mm -hmm. today is the first day of the rest of your life it, it can only get better from here on out you have one year of darkness i mean oh, everybody has a year of darkness usually it's more like 14 or 16. Life. Have you had one like mine though? No. Because I'm just saying this this is day one. This was the introduction to the dark shit that happened. Yeah. Happened. Like this was, I mean, wow. Um, I mean, I, I, I do feel for you because I, I get where you're coming from. He's like, been fired seven times yeah. in two years. Well, just, I guess, I've been through some dark days. Maybe not a year of darkness, but like some pretty dark signs. But like I get when you when you're you're so far down, you don't even know what like direction is up. Oh yeah, no, no. I, mean, I, 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 I think that's what you, basically you're saying. No, I mean, what followed after that was, I mean, so today, 16th, so let's say 16 days, um, well, January 1st was, uh, you know what, see, this is the problem, like, the dates are just not even working. This, yeah. is, this is what I'm talking about with the shell shots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know? probably not helping, but yeah, I can see it. <laughs> well so, so, then that, so then that's then what i started to do was i um well after that i went to mexico so i was like in a hotel room in mexico like trying to like drink a bunch of oxycontin um i did not die though i woke up from just like a really good deep sleep so i'm like all right well you know what i'm gonna do after this i'm just gonna go ahead right and um do it the old-fashioned way fuck the pills i'm gonna um reenact Nicholas Cage's character from *Leaving Las Vegas*, <laughs> which I did, and I did it really well. But you know what? In that movie, they like glamorize it, like, "Oh my God!" Like you can die in fucking four weeks. Who fuck that? Like nine months into it, I'm like, I'm still alive, but I am heavily hurting, right? And then so I just kind of like, what? I lost forty pounds in three months. I gained back like another twenty, and then I lost, which I didn't even know was physically possible. And then, um, so I had 13 emergency room visits last year. Mm -hmm. And then, wait, is this getting too dark? It's <laughs> pretty <know>. dark. <laughs> well, I mean, the, it's not the Christmas episode. Well, so, 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 it's not the fucking Christmas episode, so fucking go nuts. No, I, I just think that, you know, Tom Stroh is depressing, <laughs> so you're just trying to, like, trump him, you know? Oh, yeah, sh shout out for Tyson. Ah, oh, Brian, yes. What is he saying? Uh, he's just giving the clinky emotion. Mm -hmm. The one in one? Oh, the the cum pie, the beers. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the clinky, two two, two pie glasses. <laughs> uh, this, this dude's a fucking cool guy, man. Hell yeah, he, he's a fan of the show and he nailed us. And like, I still mail back and forth with him. He's great. All right, don't hi hijack. Okay, no, so no, I can tone it down if you. No, want. no, 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 no. This is your story. This is your story. If you want, if you want to like release all all there is, I mean, you can totally do it. I mean, Tom did. Yeah, I mean, trust me. I feel a lot better than having like said yes. Knock it off. No, if, you, if you want to, if you want to do that, if you want to de-stress and vent a little bit, like I, I, I suddenly feel a lot better having to vent all my fucking rage. Well, yeah. No, well, I mean, now I have, I have a therapist twice a week now because I'm so mm -hmm. messed up. Um, but um, I don't know if it's about venting, but I mean, it's 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 a fucking incredible story. Yes. Once it starts to go further, I mean, once I, you know, um, begin to tell you why I struggled with speak right now no no we're all struggling i mean it's like we got here early in the morning we zapped ourselves with like a huge amounts of caffeine and i'm i'm sleep deprived i know you're sleep deprived he's got a kid i'm sure he's sleep deprived so yeah we're all in the same boat i mean if we're stuttering it's all good you know 
So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that at all. But the thing is, is like, as I said, like multiple times before, today is the first day of the rest of your life. You're amongst really good friends. You've got a great podcast. There's like thousands and thousands of faders that are listening to this that support you and love you. And um, yeah, I mean, everything is so far so good right now. As long as like you just say, okay, everything in the past is over and I'm fucking moving forward. Fuck yeah. Yeah, just baby steps. Just, you know, just try to gradually improve your life and do better and just as, it's, 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 it sounds like you're on the right path. You know, you're, you're not Tom. You're doing great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, fine, yeah take know. it from the fucking expert right here. This guy. Yeah. No, no, I'm totally good now. It was yeah. just there were some days there where I mean I almost died like three or four times last yeah. year. So, and then what? You know how like I stopped eating and stuff for a while, and um, the only per- really. Yeah. What you stopped eating, Tom? What the big guy stopped eating? What I stopped what eating you, between you, you, lunch and dinner. There's you, like a you, couple you ever, of hours. I just didn't pick up my fork. Out, out, hung out with me. Another, another stipulation of like me. This whole divaco of me getting fired. My, my wife told me get off the drink. Uh-huh. And I was like, yeah, she's right. It's it's a it's a waste of money. It's not making me feel any better. So like I got off the drink and yeah, it was like for three or four days. I was I was going through withdrawal. And you stopped eating? Yeah, I, I was I didn't eat usually when you eat, stop drinking, you start time. eating. And then all of a sudden yeah. chocolate is awesome. Dude, chocolate is amazing. I had a box of chocolate. Not, like not, when, not, when, not when you've got like not when it's compound or being depressed and just being fucking whatever. Well, yeah, I, I did it and I felt actually feel pretty good. Can't no, you I stop don't. drinking and be happy? Like I stopped drinking, fuck you, boys. But, yeah, again, I, but this always... is not a permanent thing for me. I'm just taking a break because I got a huge show coming up. Yeah. Well, I was just doing, I was doing it for months where like, if you don't eat for a few days straight, you actually, well, I actually started to feel a bit high and it kind of felt good for a while. But mm-hmm. I mean, my hair started falling out. And then if I got really dizzy and I was about to faint, that like maybe every three days I'd get like a raw egg and crack it in the glass and just swallow it. For, Rocky style. For sustenance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rocky myself for sustenance. And like probably like the only reason I didn't die was because Johnny was coming over to the house to force feed me. Yeah, that's true. Times. After wow, this is a I depressing podcast <laughs> today. <laughs> Holy shit! Hey, this is a comedy podcast. We are Japan's this number is, one comedy podcast. This is all over the motherfucking place so, today. So then at that point, I've had a good day. Um, so this was I basically stayed well, and then you know then I lost my jobs, right? Mm-hmm. Jobs, all of them went down the toilet. I mean, I couldn't work. So I resigned from five out of six companies that I co-owned with the ex. And um, the other one, I was kind of like, I'm going to delegate the work to other people and just go on a leave of absence. And then um, I lost my house, as you know. And then... Um, Tom! That wasn't your fault. <laughs> 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 you were only there one fucking time. And it's <laughs> all it took. That's all it took. Uh, one man wrecking crew, me. <laughs> I lost my... We'll not go there. Jesus. We'll right. not go there. Okay, I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> w- that was like, what, one or two days before I had to leave that house, right? Something like that? No, it was like a month before a you month had to before. leave. Yeah. See, dates don't even um, compute anymore. Yeah. What is life. time anyway? What is time? It's, it's nor it's here nor there. Doesn't yeah. exist. And then I, um, when I lost my car... Um, well, your car was stolen. Yes, and then that, that would I qualify as losing it. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if, it, if you parked at one place and it wasn't there it when was she came gone. back, it was lost. It, yeah, it, it was gone the day I returned from Vegas. It disappeared. That was a horrible <laughs> day for me. I was taking care of her cats for three months, right? Yep. And every day I would come in, you know, and I'd unlock the door, take care of the cats, make sure everything is cool, make sure nobody broke into the house or whatnot. And then on the day she's returning, I walk up to her house and the car's gone. I was like, well, she get back early and just go well, for a drive. Well, she doesn't have a driver's license, right? Yeah. So I was like, "Oh shit, the car's gone. Oh my god, you know." And then I go inside, and then fucking the car keys are missing. I'm like, "What the fuck? <laughs> this is bad. This is weird." Um, I wasn't aware of this. I guess I'm kind of in charge of the house or whatever. And all of a sudden, she comes home. She's like, "Where's the car?" I'm like, "I don't know." Uh... <laughs> oh god. Yeah. No, and then, but then at that point, I'm like, "Oh, the car's been stolen." I'm like, "Eh, what is that? That's you know, that's a walk in the park." a uh, regular bad day for me um so uh fuck where was i uh oh yeah yeah you you saved my life and so you know i, I well was, which time by, by feeding you by feeding me well oh yeah. god man I this story is getting so first, deep yeah first meal that you gave me was after i had 
been rocking myself for a while. And okay, this is just, this is sounding really weird to all the people that are listening. They're driving to work, driving to school, they're drinking what with their the friends. Fuck? What the fuck is going on? Okay. Like, me and my wife are friends with you and your husband, right? There's, like, the four of us. We go out to restaurants and bars together. We always used to hang out. Your husband moved to a different country, Mexico, Mexico. to open factories and start working there and, open, like, expand the businesses, right? And then um, he divorced you on your anniversary one year ago. And then you didn't tell me that he was uh, divorcing you or anything like that or whatever. And I just assumed he was coming back. So every, like, three weeks, I'm like, so when's Mr. E coming back? And uh, you're like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Until one day you're just like, yeah, he divorced me. I haven't eaten this like this long and so on. So I was like, holy shit. So I came over to your house and you're like skeleton. I was like, oh my <laughs> God, what the fuck happened? What have you been doing? You're like, I just haven't left my bedroom and drinking every day. I'm like, oh my God, where's the booze? You're like, it's over there. So I went to the board bar, poured myself a drink. I'm like, all right, now I gotta get you some food. So then I went down to the corner store and I got like all this meats and stuff. I made like this huge, awesome spaghetti. And then after that, I called my wife. I'm like, we got to feed this bitch. <laughs> I didn't call you the free <laughs> word. I'm doing that for comedy. Okay. And then the rest is, and the rest is history. And now, yeah, now, so now, now there's the three of us that are hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. other guy's gone. So then, well, Tom, can you be the fourth guy? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's keep things even. Listen, if I could walk here. Yeah. I could, I could check in on it. I'm, fuck it. I, I'm unemployed. I have nothing better to do with my time anyway. I can oh, my God. You should totally abuse this guy. Give him tattoos. Make him clean your house. Yeah. Oh, you've got it made. Okay, we'll have him like... Know. There we go. We'll work for tattoos. She gives me a touch-up. I'll oh, help her out. God, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's do that's this on the well, show. I, well, I mean, that's why I opened the tattoo parlor here, because, you know, I had to uh, resign from all the other companies that was running because of this the situation. So then, um, fuck, where was I? The, uh, the, the, I was the skin My tattoo. family fed you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, this. <laughs> Me and so, the missus would really come over with big meals. Yeah, so from January to like September. Um, oh, and then so then, you know, of course, like with the leaving Las Vegas situation, like I was drinking, and I know this because I had an Amazon subscription, like 150 Budweiser's a week and one bottle of gin a day mm. with no food. It's pretty so, hardcore. yeah. And it's a good then, way to lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to kill yourself. No, 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 it, did, it didn't work. <laughs> it, it, it didn't work. But what I did accomplish <laughs> was I was able to get a stroke, a mini stroke, TIA stroke, um, a few handful of months ago, right when I was in the ambulance. That was before you went to before Vegas. Went oh, to yeah, Vegas. that was like five months ago. Yeah, four months ago. Now I'm fucking up time. <laughs> this is a comedy podcast. That Watch was... it with your family. <laughs> That was really scary. And I, I at that time, I was getting this full stomach Ouija board tattoo. <clears throat> this four-hour stomach tattoo. And like one hour into it, as I'm getting the tattoo, that was the first morning that I had not had a morning drink in months and months and months and months and months because I was getting a tattoo. And like I'm like, that's rude to the tattoo artist if I come in drunk. So I didn't have my morning drink. And one hour into the stomach tattoo, it was like my um, eyes started crossing, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "That's not normal. Why are my eyes crossed?" And then I told it's normal her, for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't we do this? We just call it. Tuesday. Yeah, and I'm like laying on the table, and then my my arms and legs kind of cross, like you know when like a fly falls over and dies, and its legs like cross like this. Yeah. What do they do? That, that started happening to me. So I was like a dead fly on the table getting the stomach tattoo. So I told the artist like I need a break, right? So mm -hmm. I get up to have like a smoke break, and as I stand up, I like couldn't walk, and then I fell down. Mm -hmm. And like took out like this giant potted plant tree and everything, and I'm like crashing all over the floor, and I'm struggling to get up. And she's like, "Holy shit, you are fucked up! Like, we need to like not finish this." And I'm like, "Um, no, I'm like, no, 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 I'll find a fire, fire, right?" So then I went. Pretty hardcore. This. Yeah. So then I we ended up finishing. The I think I'm just probably used to tattoos. She's like, "Eh, it tickles." That it hurt. It hurt a lot just because I was because just because I was already so fucked up from the months of what I was doing to my body. So it was like mentally I was like I can handle the physical pain, but apparently physically my body said no and shut down. So like I got get back on the table anyway. I finished it three more hours, and when I'm done, I was like okay, and I I I am not doing well right now. Um, I'm like struggling to have like 
proper thoughts that make any sort of sense or whatever. And I'm forgetting how to speak Japanese. So that's, that's I, not good because you've been here a long ass time, right? Yeah, and here. I don't know my fucking birthday. Like, so I'm like, that's not good. I um, took a taxi to the nearest hospital and I went, with the doctor took a look at me in my eyes and did like a test with my hands and legs and stuff. And he went, oh, hell no, I'm calling you an ambulance right now. So I'm like, all right. So I get in the ambulance and like, we're doing this, whatever it is situation. We're looping around the city trying to find a fucking hospital that will fucking take me during Corona times. While they asked me over and over and over, Daijoku desu ka, Daijoku desu ka. I'm like, no, if I was Daijoku desu, I wouldn't be in the motherfucking ambulance right now having a stroke fucking at this age. And they're like, what country are you from? What do you do for work? And I'm like, fuck you. Take me to the fucking <laughs> hospital right fucking now. And um, <laughs> this kind of weird for them to ask that. <laughs> no, that's, that's typical Japanese that's because they're like, oh, she's a foreigner. We're just going to pawn her off on somebody else. Yeah, they, 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 where do you work? What do you do for a living? <laughs> What's your favorite color? Yeah, that's that's, that's like, to totally fucking relevant to oh the woman in the back of the ambulance God. who's having a fucking stroke, right? Exactly. It's like, I didn't know that American strokes were different from Japanese strokes. I'm sorry. Anyway, so I, you know, we did this and we did that and we went to the hospital and then, then it was like, blood tests and everything they came back and they're like oh by the way also your liver is fucked i'm like well i've uh, got that duh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we probably all do oh, oh yeah <laughs> so and then i'm like i followed up later and my stroke doctor was like you can never drink or smoke ever again because like you will a hundred percent be back here again and we will meet again he looks me in the eyes we'll meet again so I'm like, all right, bro. So at this point, it's like fucking finally September. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do to um, continue on my path of Nicolas Cage and myself? I'm going to fly to Vegas. So I did. I hopped on a plane in September. My birthday present to myself, September 4th, was to take myself to Vegas by myself and just sit there and drink, which I did. I stayed in the Pyramid Hotel, the Luxor is lovely. Very nice hotel. Yeah, so I spent my birthday just sitting there um, drinking. That was fun. And then I ended up getting kidnapped in Vegas after that. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. Tom, you've never been kidnapped? What's the matter with you? <laughs> okay, I guess it's not a trip to Vegas unless you get kidnapped, right? Yeah. Uh, he's just not cute enough like the rest of us. Yeah, I'm not sexy. <laughs> no, no, and you, you, know, you, you do bring up a good point. No, no one would fucking want to kidnap this ugly bug. Well, I mean, yeah, they're like, we're not getting any ransom from this <laughs> asshole. I, I, yeah, I just accidentally <laughs> like um, bumped into some like serial killer guy. So, well, I just I met him at a bar. I was drinking alone. And um, he's like, you know, just really like nice, nice, normal. Um, like, I love Jesus, I like football kind of guy. And, and I was like, now I know what was wrong with me my whole life. I have been hanging out with the wrong men, right? Right. And he likes me. And I'm like, how lovely, right? And then it turns out, how naive was I that somebody that normal would be interested in someone like me? So anyway, he's like, okay, do you want to go to another bar with me? I said, sure. So he goes, get in my car. So I'm like, okay. So I run in the car. Now, don't judge me and be like, you're so stupid. You got in a stranger's car. At this point, I'm like, I am on a death path anyway. So I'm like, fuck it. If I die, I die. So I get in this car. And as he's driving, suddenly, like, he changes. And he looks at me and he's like, these inverted cross tattoos on your face, you're going to hell. And I was like, so Whoa. Mr. Rogers turned into Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes. And I was like, oh, here it comes. And then um, as he's driving, he's just like, for no reason at, at all, just out of nowhere, he just throws out, he just goes, you know, if I was a girl that got raped, I would just kill myself. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. That's pretty fucked up. Okay, then that's when and I you jump like, out of the car. I was like, Fuck it, I'm this out. is <laughs> how I'm going to fucking die. I was like, today's the day I'm going to fucking this die. This is how horror movies start. Well, and so, so I looked at the guy and I said, well, I need to get out of this car right fucking now. I need to get out right now. And then he's like, and he's driving and he looks at me and he goes, no, you're fine. 
<laughs> no. Alright, 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 alright. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say what I would do in the situation. I would be like, "Listen, sir, um, this has been very entertaining, and I want to thank you for the ride to the bar. But um, I just realized that I'm on my period. I just realized right now, and I really immediately have to go to a pharmacy or convenience store immediately." Dude, that guy's gonna hit the brakes so fast, and he's gonna hit you, and not hit you, but hit the 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 what you call it, the, the door unlock button or whatever, and get you out of that car as soon as possible. That's what I would say. Would that work? Uh, Maybe that would turn I, freak I, out. I would say I, any excuse to get out of the situation would be a good one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Well, I mean, at this point, as we're driving further and further away from the strip, and we're going towards the desert. Okay, that's really bad. <laughs> that's really bad. That's like this is definitely how horror movies end. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um it's like casino. I was kind of like looking out the window. And you know, he's drinking. He has all these like bottles by his feet. He's drinking and just driving. He's, he's drinking driving. and driving in Vegas. Yeah. Man. And so Tuesday in Vegas, right? Typical. Yeah. So, you know, as we approach the desert, he's starting to run out of some drinks. And we and I saw in the distance there was like one like kind of um, you know whatever bar I don't know I was fucked up I was drunk obviously so I'm like I was like hey before we continue on with whatever we're gonna do which I'm down with why don't we like the sun's rising let's just go to this fucking place get some breakfast we get some eggs and some toast and get some more drinks right buy some more drinks and some cigarettes and then let's get back in the car and we're gonna fucking do this. And he goes, okay. Right? He didn't have it all together in the head, so he's like, okay. Obviously not. Well, yeah, serial killers. Well, you're not really that dependent If, if you're going to kidnap a woman, talk, talk to her about Jesus yeah. and tell her, she, tell her she's going to hell and blah, 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 blah. He's probably not in the right head space. Well, I, mean, he I was, wonder if he's listening to this podcast. Ooh, well, I mean, he's not, 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 not like an intelligent one, is what I'm trying oh, to say. Oh, he's like one of the dumber of the yeah, serial killers. Yeah, he's, it's a whole spectrum. It's just, yeah. Statistically, like, we think, like, when we think serial killers, we think, like, Hannibal Lecter, they're so smart, that's why they didn't get caught. Ted no, Bundy was fucking smart. Yeah, T Ted Bundy was smart, but th those are the exception, actually, because I've read up about serial killers, but most of them got basically got away with a lot of other shit like the night stalker was dumb as a pose yeah, yeah they, they they got lucky because basically the cops fucked up yeah yeah, yeah. and he, even jeremy uh, uh, sorry jeffrey dahmer he could he could have been caught early oh, yeah because yeah, well, he, he had a live-in girlfriend that went to the police and said i think there's something wrong with my boyfriend i think you should investigate him jeffrey dahmer was gay though yeah oh, sorry, no 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 not jeffrey dahmer sorry i'm getting my serial was confused damn it <laughs> uh ted bunny Oh, yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. So um, even Jeffrey Dahmer cops fucked up too. Well, I mean, honestly, they still fuck it up to this day. And there are so many more serial killers than we ever realized. They all walk among us, they're mm -hmm. everywhere. And like, they, nobody gets caught because, I mean, you know, just, this is the world we, we live in, for real. Okay. okay. How did you escape? Um, so I said, let's get the breakfast and the drinks. So he goes, okay. So um, we, we pull in the parking lot and then and we go inside and we sat down together and we ordered drinks and we ordered food and I sat there quietly. And as soon as the, the waiter put down the plate of the eggs, I got up and I ran the fuck out. That's... Yeah, that sounds sorry. like a reasonable way to get out of the situation. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Fuck, I'm paying for this." Yeah, fuck, gotta, it, fuck this, I'm out. I gotta stay. <laughs> that's that's more than enough for a lifetime of sittings. Yeah. So then I went back to my hotel, but then I lost my credit card. He had your credit card? No, I don't. <clears throat> I don't really know. I think I, I. Who knows? You know. So I was in Vegas for a handful of days without. My credit card. That my story money. could have gone so much worse than you watched. Losing what your credit card is bad, but that, that could have been a lot worse the way what, you're you telling me. Yeah. Oh, that was like every other day in Vegas situation. Jesus. I was putting myself in those situations on a daily basis. So then at that point. New job. You can be a spokeswoman for Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. Vegas. Let me tell you the real truth about Vegas. <laughs> it's a lovely place. I really loved it. Um, you know, and then it's just certain situations that I was putting myself in. I was just like, I would just like be kind of scared, but then I just like put my hand in my heart and be like safe, and then just go into those situations. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Wow, wow! I had no idea the show was going to take a left turn like this. That's but a, yeah, like, that's, a, that's an emotional roller coaster. She got my story, which is pretty fucked up, and her story, she's like, 
Oh, you think your life's fucked oh, up? Yeah. Look, look, like, hold my beer, son of a bitch. All this stuff, this is just all just the beginnings of things, too. Oh, oh the, the year got darker. It got darker and darker and darker. And then... Um, Until today. And then what happened after that? After Vegas, I went to Hollywood because I was like, so I've been married. I've been divorced twice, married twice. I went to Hollywood. I was like, you know what? I want to say goodbye to my first husband. He was a nice person. So, you know, I was there for a while, but then I ended up meeting another guy. So then I was like, is this possible? You know, romance in my life. I thought I was done for. So then I started to get a little bit happy, right? And that's how my two week vacation ended up being three months and you had to take care of my cats, which thank you so much. And I'm so sorry that I kept pushing and pushing and pushing, but I was just, I was finally- You lived for- down the street. It was no problem for us to come here to- Feed the cats because you watch your cable TV too, which is kind of cool. So for three months, you know, I lived with with this guy, and then um, then I was kind of like, why don't we? We had this thing like, let's. I I'm gonna I wanted I want to move to Norway, right? So I was like, but it's taking a long time getting my visa, and so I'm still in Japan waiting for that. So it's like, okay, after three months, it's like, why don't I go back to Japan and you know take care of the situations with my house and the cats and this and that and let's move to vegas together me and this guy until my norwegian visa pans out so we had you know this this kind of um this planned so then i came back to japan and then um on christmas eve when we did that special um i got the news that um he had died the book so there's no vegas in my <laughs> yeah, completely, completely roller coaster. So you're way down, and it starts to go back up, and then fucking just the yeah, just pulled the rug out in front of me. I'm trying to find comedic elements of this tragedy. But Tom, you, you you took the mic and you ran with it. Thank you. So, I'm like, uh, and that's why we don't go to Vegas. I don't know. I'm just, well, like don't this, go to Vegas. The moral of the story is don't go to Vegas. Don't, don't talk this, to any serial killers or the, financial serial killers. The, the guy I found was this was in Hollywood that I found him. So he he passed away in Hollywood. Oh, so know. Vegas is fine. I don't. It's the whole world that sucks. I, I, I don't know. I don't Vegas know. Vegas like, sucks. I, Hollywood sucks. Mexico sucks. Japan sucks. I, I, I think I think the happenstance and the circumstance is fine. I think it's kind of ruined for her. So if she doesn't want to go back there, I wouldn't blame her. I don't want to go these places. Yeah. anywhere. So then at that point, then, you know, I thought I got down again. You know, I think I we should start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I I really I'm do. starting to feel like I've had a couple <laughs> drinks after this. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> We are, we, are, we are officially, we are, no one's had a drop, not drop to drink today. And like, I feel like I've been drinking to listen to this fucked up shit. Oh my God. You know, I'm in the middle. I've got, I've got jokers on the right and fools on the left. You know, here I go. Dun, 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 dun. Stuck in the middle with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like I should tell a bad story. Like, oh, you know what? I, uh, uh, got drunk over winter break and fell down and banged myself up. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, and so you know, New Year's was just that wasn't fun because I we were together on Christmas, but then you you went to your in laws' place, which is super far. So New mm. Year's, I just sat at home by myself, like eating chili out of a can with a bent spoon, mm. you know, and that was like sad. And mm, that is um, sad. No, no one should have to spend New Year's alone. No, and um. I mean, and th- th- these are just some of the things that happened last year. Like I said, every, every single fucking day. So if, if there was one day where something bad, like, wasn't being done to me by other people and their shit, and I'm like, ooh, nothing bad ha- is happening today, then, you know, one of my cats will be like, oh, let me go eat a poisonous flower and fuck myself up. And, you know, when we're at the emergency room with our my cat at fucking four in the morning. That's yeah. Thank so, you again. So, yeah, so in other no words, what you're saying, for. So in other words, what you're saying is just one goddamn thing after another. Every day. Every single fucking day. To the point where it's like every morning when I'm waking up, I was like, I'm afraid to wake up today. Um, so um Maybe you should find Jesus. <laughs> Maybe this whole Satan thing's not working out. <laughs> well, if it wasn't for Satan, I would be dead by now, I feel. And you. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Johnny. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Me and my my better half were, were pretty good sure. friends. But you know, 
speeders, speeders, if you if you stuck around this long, I got to say thank you. And um, 99.9% .9 of the time, we are a comedy podcast that we, we talk about everything Japan. Well, I guess this is everything Japan, but you know, every so often, you know, you, you can't be on the bright, you got to go into the dark. So yeah, I guess this is like, what would we call this? Honest time? Honest time. time. Fun time with truth that be told. Uh, group, truth be told. Group therapy. Group therapy. Yes, yes. And I guess I'm the ringleader. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. But today, I've said this several times before, today is the first day of the rest of your life, literally, because the, all this hijinks and shenanigans started one year ago, literally today, the 16th of January in 2020. No, 2021. This is now January 16th, 2022. So, I mean, it, it can't go down. It's got to go up, you know? It can't go down when it's as down as it fucking could be. If I had died, it would be better. You know? No, I wouldn't say that. Being dead well, sucks. There's no beer in heaven or hell. Really? Yeah, dude. Seriously, they don't got breweries up there or down there and shit, dude. The breweries are here in the middle, man. You got to stick around and hang out with us. Dude, I mean, look at this fat fuck right here. He <laughs> loves the middle part. <laughs> well, I mean, not at, die. now I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Of yeah, course. we're all happy, I meant, too. like, if I had died, the, the suffering, you know, which my suffering was legendary, even in hell, as they would say. Like, that would not have happened. And, you know, now that I'm happy and, like, when I was, like, moving, you know, myself out of the last house and stuff, like, I opened the curtains for the first time in months and months and the sun was, like, shining into my bedroom. And I was like, holy shit, I was living like this. It was just like a mattress on the floor with one little lamp and broken glass everywhere and blood everywhere and empty beer cans and cigarette butts. Upstairs? No, at the old house. Oh, when the I old house. Because, you know, I lost oh, That was house. because of Tom in episode <laughs> number 600. No, it's just, <laughs> it's just yeah. the way I was living. I had created my own, like, torture chamber in my bedroom at that point in time. But, and so, you know, and then, you know, I, I, I don't have any family or anything because I'm not communication with my biological family so it's just like i lost like only you know legal family member i had at the time but um yeah well so 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 hence you know like two days ago and stuff like i'm like sober i'm like in a busy crowded area and i just like i'm like lights sound like i'm fucking shaking in old fucking mashed potatoes in my head situation and it's like you know the doctor just He's like, well, you know, you're under a lot of stress. And I'm like, hmm. hmm. It's true. You're under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. The doctor then said, have you tried not being stressed out? Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would, God, you know, it's like some days I would get really pissed off. I lost a lot of friends, right? Because I started to get really snappy and mean, which I usually am not. But it's like just saying yeah, I've, stupid I've, fucking I've, shit to me. I've, I've been there. I've, been there as right. well. We're, so we're he's lost so many place. friends. You have no idea how many friends. Tom's lost enemies. That's how bad he got. Yeah, it's, 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 it's no fun to pick on you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like, oh, hey, today, I, you know, I'm talking to a friend. They're like, how are you? And I'm like, well, you know, I just got out of the emergency room because I needed stitches on my arm situation. And because um, I got drunk, fuck myself up again. Or today I have got my arms in the sling sort of situation. And um, they're just like, well, you know, watch this video of this indian guy named sad guru or something and like he'll fix your anxiety and the guy's like oh you know what you can fix 50 percent of your anxiety right now if you just put your hands together like this and go thank you world or what and, and i'm watching this yeah, and right. i'm like oh my fucking god i'm like you don't get it you just don't fucking get it and i'm like fucking snapping and destroying everyone who like says stuff like that to me and so you know um anyway you know but you know me i can yeah, yeah, totally. Well, just look at it this way. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. <laughs> it's the going. first day of the rest of your life. That was a year ago. Everybody has a bad year. Even in the TV show Roseanne, Darlene wore black for a year. Remember that? When Darlene was like the cute little kid, she wore black for oh, a year, yeah. and then she got the boyfriend. Also, she started wearing like... Oh, and... she went all emo gone. Yeah, yeah right. Right. this is before emo. This is primo. So, yeah, she was... So she was doing it before it was cool. Yeah, she was doing she was it a before. Trendsetter. She was a trendsetter, right? And um, yeah, and so anyway, yeah, everybody has like a dark year. I mean, shit. So I mean, yeah. So now it's like, are you still thinking about Roseanne? <laughs> <laughs> I see that look in your face. You're thinking. I'm like, no, Roseanne. She was it's deep like, in thought. It, it was a show about a lady named Roseanne, whose actually name was Roseanne, and uh, she had a show about her family, but it wasn't her real family. It was a fake family with Dan 
Not Dan O, but Dan. Yeah, Dan Aykroyd. No, it wasn't Dan Aykroyd. No, it was, uh, was uh, just, Dan. it was uh, Goodwin. Goodman, John. John Goodman. Goodman. Yeah, Dan was the, the the name in the in the show. His name was Dan. Dan. Oh, but yeah, Dan. but her real husband was Dan. Uh, he was the comedian. Yeah, yeah. Then they got divorced, and he wound up moving off to Canada, being a weird conspiracy theorist. Uh, something like that. Who knows? It was, but, it, was, it was bizarrely weird. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Hollywood. But that's nor here nor there. But anyway, going back, Darlene had a dark year. Bad things happened to her. So now, I mean. That's in the past. Let's move forward in the future. I mean, the thing is, I mean, everybody has dark spots. Yours is a little bit more darker than other people. I mean, kidnapping, serial killers, divorces, uh, car theft, death. Yeah. So I can't get much worse than that, you know? So it's just like, you know, it can only get better. You know, I mean, we're going to play Scrabble later, right, Tom? I, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I, I can promise you one thing. I can promise you one thing. Like, uh, when you've gone through, like, really dark situations oh, in life. Tom Arnold. <laughs> thank Tom, you. Thank Tom you. Arnold. Yeah. That's, that's why we have Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Uh, uh, yeah. Like, I can promise you this. Like, you don't know the good until you... You, you've seen the bad and if you're going through a really dark period in your life like any positive experience you have like moving forward is going to be so much better you know you go going to go out to a nice restaurant and like bite into a nice steak and go, you know what this is fucking good yeah yeah, yeah let's get steaks later yeah fuck yeah let's yeah. go to the no, wrestling steak. restaurant have you seen that place Ooh, I don't know. There, I love that place. yeah that place is good well you know what happened for me which which is great um is that like i've lost like fear like I have, okay i have anxiety and then you facial tick and this and that which seems to be like physical but well, i haven't even noticed your facial tick oh, it, where it, is it is it, it like the joker you're like <laughs> no, that's a good like one. my jaw just starts twitching but um i don't know it's probably who knows but it's just mm. like um see, i used to be nervous all the time you know i used to be like you know if i'm you know late to this fucking meeting or this or i don't pay my rent or this or that like i'm gonna get fucked up or you know people are gonna like but you know when every single one of your fears comes true then there's nothing left to fear anymore all we have is fear itself it's lovely no, no it's like nothing there is scares the, me yeah. anymore it's the only thing to fear is fear itself it's yes, so, yes 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 john f kennedy it's, 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 it's very positive you know i feel great i feel really really great yeah it's good. It's, it's fantastic. Positivity, you know. Positivity. And yeah. on that... Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you know what would make you feel a lot better is us making fun of some fucked up news. That's true. We've got a lot of, like, really fucked up people to make fun of. Yeah. So yeah. Let's, let's fucking do it. And, huh? You have coffee on your nose. I've got coffee on my nose. I, I tried, you know, <laughs> I needed a drink after, like, your guys' stories, you know? I was like, oh, my God. Oh, I mean, you're going to need a whole bar after that oh geez a whole bar no but the, all this thing here is coffee so Ooh, boy all right doing a podcast sober is definitely <laughs> definitely not thing. what we normally used to do that is true that is true okay let's get into our news all right let's see here i sent you a bunch of stories i don't know if like they were any good god damn it used to be so easy for me to do the news no, I got stories. Are you good? Yeah, I come prepared. I come prepared. I sent you some stories. I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at them. Everything's going to get yeah, better. Don't no, worry. I'm, first I'm, day. Well, I'm happy. I was just thinking of all the other um, things that each day happened. Just because it's so fucking, like, interesting that yeah. something can go back to back that bad every single day. It's yeah, because, like, you know, so, like, like I was saying earlier, like, you've been down for so long. Like, you don't even know, like, what direction things, things is. things that do not happen to normal people are starting to happen. I mean, like almost like I was cursed almost, right? And it was just like, um, just the stories I told today is just like a s small part of everything that happened. You know, I, mean, I just said the stuff that I'm allowed to say. Because yeah. some of the stuff, I cannot say it, you know, because yeah. I will have legal problems. No, it's, 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 so zip, but. Well, it, it's like that ancient Chinese saying, like, uh, may you live in interesting times. I'm pretty sure it's a fucking curse. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's a pandemic. Do you guys know about that? Oh. <laughs> no, man, I've just been sitting around playing with my well, kids. Well, you know, my, my main work was um, concerts, so, mm. you know, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. See, this is a bit of a far cry from a concert, but yeah, 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 yeah. I get you, I get you. No, I'm not, not me doing concerts, me working with concerts, like, I was doing over 300 concerts a year. So that's pretty hardcore. Years. We've got news here, but I'm almost positive we've already covered this news. I got a couple. Three people stabbed outside University of Tokyo. You get that one? Whoa! 
<laughs> Look at all this. Hey, what's up? I'm Johnny, a.k.a. The Spill Tink, the one and only, and uh, today I'm going to make a popsicle painting. I'm really excited to do this. I've got all my paints here. It takes about this much paint to make a popsicle painting. And uh, I've got my two other most important ingredients. Very strong hot coffee. Oh, actually, that's not that hot, but still, it's strong coffee. <laughs> and I've got punk rock music. With these two things, nothing could go wrong. All right, with that said, let's rock. See, Guma Man arrested for attempted marriage of woman without her knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost positive we did this before. This seems so familiar. But this is like, what? I, I, I got to date these. God damn it. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, faders, for all you guys out there listening to the show and watching this on YouTube or whatnot, um, this right here is the news that we have today. And if we did this before because we're faded, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Blame me. This is my bad news. Oh, God darn it. <laughs> I, I have the news from last time and I'm doing it again. Okay. Let's see. Wait, last time I didn't do the news because we did an interview that lasted two hours before that was the Christmas episode. Do you guys remember this? Guma man arrested for attempted marriage no. of woman. Okay, shit. Then this is the news. Okay, I got this. Okay. So we are going to do this. Um, Missy, uh, you've been married twice. twice. Do you want to do this story? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, this is a comedy podcast. <laughs> I'm trying to keep together, fingers. I'm doing the best I goddamn can. The first question here: Say so you're married a couple of times. Like, have you ever been married without your knowledge? Bingo. Yeah. No, but I'm single now. Everyone out there. No. <laughs> so potentially, you could be. Maybe the story is about you. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Whenever you're ready, please begin. Okay. Get closer here because you know I got some blindness. Do you want to move closer here? Yeah, I can move the, the microphone uh, over since here. The Mr. Stroke. Um, okay. There comes a time in some people's lives when the urge to settle down and get married kicks in. However, marriage requires hard work and patience to lay a solid foundation through a series of major steps. The hardest of which is asking someone out in the first place. This is true. Wouldn't it be nice to skip all that fear of rejection and subsequent emotional investment and just get right to the honeymoon? That's what one 39-year-old man in Isesaki City, Guma Prefecture thought, but paid the price for it. In late September of last year, the man walked into his local government office and submitted the necessary documents to register for marriage with a woman in her 30s. All the paperwork was in order and signed in the traditional Japanese manner of a hako stamp bearing the owner's family name. The only problem was that the woman had no idea what was happening. Although everyone has one unique registered hanko for signing documents, less official backup stamps can easily be brought at most stationary stores for less than important purposes, like signing for packages or letters from school. While such a stamp wouldn't hold up if challenged in court, it was enough to pass a basic check in this case. Presumably, after either the man or the government broke the news to the new bride, she immediately called the police. They were then able to cancel the marriage registration before it was finalized. The man was arrested on January 5th for forgery and is said to have admitted to the charges, telling, people, uh, telling police that he wanted to marry the woman because he liked her. While the police are probably busy advising the suspect on matters of the heart and the law, readers of the news were understandably creeped out that such a weird crime had gotten as far as it did. Wow. Okay. Jeez Louise. That is pretty hardcore. Yeah, I'm married, but it's a secret. It's so secret. Even she doesn't know about it. <laughs> oh my God. So what would you do if all of a sudden somebody came to you and they're like, yo, you're not getting divorced. You're getting married. In fact, you are married. What would you do? What would you do? Um, I'd be like, that is so romantic. <laughs> really? really? <laughs> I would ask, well, she, what is your like, Wait a second. I thought I quit drinking. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wanted to do something stupid when I was drunk. No, but I would ask how much they're worth. I'm like, oh, how much are you worth? Because then when you get the divorce, you get 50%. So that's basically, you know, uh, an early Christmas, I guess. I mean, unless, you know, they like move to Mexico or something. Yeah, it would be bad. 
Damn, early Christmas bonus. Tom, now, Tom, Tom dated a very psychotic woman, um, the belly dancer. Christmas. What would you do if all of a sudden you came home and there's like a certificate of marriage, like stuck on your door with a knife? What would you do, Tom? You're like, oh no. I would get the fuck out of there, dude. Well, no, you're married. Now you, you can't go anywhere. You're married. It's a legal contract. Where do you I go? Would it's binding. Still be getting the fuck out of there. Get, getting the fuck out of where? You can't run. You could <laughs> run around the country a million times, yeah. no matter what. You're still married. Yeah. Fight or flight instinct would kick. It would kick in, and I would choose to fly. The only place where you could go where it's not binding is North Korea. Would you do that? You're like, I am free. Oh hell no. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because uh, North Korea is just synonymous with freedom. Well, regarding marriage, yeah. Apparently <laughs> so. You, that's the only place you could go on the planet where you're going to be completely free. You'd be like, yes, I'm no longer married. There's, there's, there's got to be some another country that's not as fucked up as North Korea that doesn't have an extradition treaty with Japan. Nah, it's North Korea. Nah, 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 nah North Korea. You're screwed. So what would you do? Fight or flight? Would you get a lawyer or you're just like, well, I guess I gotta probably, this pro- probably do the same thing this lady did. Just go to the police, be like, yo, I didn't do this. I swear. Well, at the very bottom it says, till death do us part. And you're like, hey, wait a second. I think I found it out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, although I think I, I think a man tried to divorce his wife because he had a heart attack. And he basically said he was arguing to death to his part. He's like, well, I had a heart attack and I was dead, so I guess I'm free now. Holy shit, he's got a point. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's You're a, technically dead for a couple yeah, of I mean, seconds. I gotta say it, like hats off to this dude. That's a damn good argument. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't hold, go his way and hold up in court, but still, like that's, that's my lawyer. Yeah. He told death to his part. He was dead. Now he's then he got better. Oh, and he man. just wanted out. Yeah, I suppose having, having a massive heart attack could give you a bit of a clarity in life. He should have stayed dead. <laughs> <laughs> I <I'm> did. <free! laughs> yeah, so, so, so as his soul is leaving his body, it's just like the ghost, like, flips up and he's like, flipping the burden. He's like, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> I'm out, bitches. <laughs> All right, okay, next story, next story. Moving forward. Okay, where are we? Where are we? Okay, uh, da, 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 da. okay, here we go. Uh, I'll do this one. Man arrested for attempt of bank robbery in Sapporo. Okay, this is old school. Do you think he was wearing a hockey mask? No, ski mask. Gotcha. Right. I mean, if you're going to rob a bank, you might as well go all, all out, right? Well, that's like super. You know, you know what would be even cooler if his, uh, what was it, point break, if he wore an ex-president mask? That would be even more awesome. Which, like, he's wearing like a Kawizmi mask? Kawizmi. Shinzo Kawizmi. Abe mask? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Or, I don't know, man, or even better than that, man, fucking go, just lean into fucking pop culture and wear a fucking Joker mask. Oh, you know, no, 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 you can't say that. That was already done on Halloween. Oh, that's... Yeah, oh, that was pretty dark. Okay. Too, too soon. Too soon. Too Moving soon. forward, police in Sapporo have arrested a 37-year-old man for allegedly attempting to rob a bank in Sapporo on Tuesday. How could you rob a bank? There's fucking cameras everywhere. What a dumbass. According to police, Shoyo Wakabayashi, a quote-unquote self-professed uh, construction worker, what the fuck does that mean, Tom? You were in construction. Self-professed, Self-professed construction, construction worker. What does that mean? Like, I work construction uh, around my house. It, it, it means, like, when the cops asked him what, what he's doing for a living, he said, I'm a construction worker. And then, then they called the XYZ company, whoever he said he worked for. And they're like, we don't know this asshole. Okay, there we go. That's what it means. Okay. Entered a branch of the Hokuriku Bank in Toyohira Ward at around 11 a.m. Fuji TV reported he gave a bank clerk a handwritten note that read, quote, prepare 10 million yen. I have a knife. End quote. 10 million yen. That's all he wanted. 10 million yen for the rest of his life. Oh, gosh. That's like, what, 100, 100 Gs? Uh, yeah, it's about that. I wonder if he had a Rambo knife. I mean, then again, wait a second. He shows up at this, this day and age where there's Corona everywhere, and he shows up at a bank with a fucking Rambo knife. Dude, all right, if you go to a bank right now, A, there's cameras everywhere, and B, there's like there's like glass. There's not glass, but there's like the plastic shields that separates you from other people everywhere. Even if he had a Rambo, he'd be like, spread, he'd be carving his name into like the glass. Like, I am Rambo, give me your money. Yeah, because, we were the fucking teller sitting there. She's like pushing the silent alarm under the desk. She's like, probably beep, giving beep, him beep, the beep, finger, beep, like, you are a dumbass. Yeah, was, so she, yeah, she's giving the finger and she's pushing the silent alarm under her desk. Oh, or my. his. We can't discriminate. It could be a man. It could be anyway, but th- that's ridiculous. I mean, you, oh, Jesus, ridiculous. However, the unemployed, oh, however, the employee active activated a silent alarm and police rushed to the scene 
seen and apprehended Wakabayashi. There were no other customers in the bank at the time and no bank employees were injured, obviously. Please quote Wakabayashi as saying, quote, shit, I need a large sum of money, end quote. Wow, man, at least he's honest. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's some wily Coyote level of shit. Yes. Yes. I think. It was like you, you were saying he had a Rambo knife. I think he had an acne knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think it was rubber? <laughs> oh my God. Do you think he had like the Grim Reaper blade? Like that's like the front of your door. Did you see the Grim Reaper blade? Oh, should uh, I bring it? Yes, yes. This is hilarious. Yeah, those are cool. This is a symbol of good things that's going to happen no, starting like he, today. He wanted to be all like stealthy about it, so he walked in there with an overcoat and like you know those things are big. You can conceal them uh, underneath a trench coat. Mm -hmm. So he was probably like he, he probably just like walked in there and just kind of goes into the corner and starts putting it together. No, probably. Yeah. Tom, Tom, all right, Tom. What is wrong with this picture? Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Blade, that blade doesn't look very dangerous. So, like, you know, if you came in and like wanted to rob a store, I was working at, I probably, I probably laugh in your face. Although Why? this, this, uh, look closely, this, Tom. Yeah. Look closely. You're, you're on to something, but uh, you know, you're not 110 percent there. It's what, ceramic or plastic or whatever. Look closer. Maybe you're too close. <laughs> All right. What's his name? Gr the Grim Reaper. Uh, what does the Grim Reaper do? He, he kills people. Well, no, he's the spirit of death. And what does the spirit of death do? He guides you to the afterlife. How does he do it? I don't know. He fucking grabs your soul. You got to be dead to meet him. I, what, what tool does he use? A scythe. Okay. What does a scythe look like? Oh, it's upside down. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it I took a that. while to pull that one out. <laughs> okay. So, yes, it's upside down. Missy, what's this the story why, of this that? This is why I don't rob banks. Uh, Mexico. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't buy Grim Reaper statues in Mexico. They'll have the uh, scythe. That's what, is that what it's scythe. called? It's called scythe. They'll have the scythe upside down. I think it's cute. It looks like a sign. It should be like, welcome to hell. This should be written on it. You know? No, the Grim Reaper is a, is a very um, good, good spirit, I'd say. Yeah, we all meet him once. Worthy of worship. So, no, nothing but absolute respect devotion for me but when you know things like this um happen mm -hmm. it's upside I, I, down yeah see yes. uh, see obviously brian watches a lot more uh, horror movies than i do so, yeah, he obviously does tell him about the podcast he's got an amazing podcast oh yeah he's uh was at rotten reviews where he reviews uh 80s and 90s uh horror movies and gives his like commentary and you know explains what's going on oh yeah this is i think uh he did, he did a couple and then like obviously like new podcast you're trying to get your feel but now he basically says all right hit play now and you, we can watch it live and you can hear his commentary and he's uh yeah he did he, critters he's yeah right. oh shit i should i, I should check in on those as a, a favorite of mine but uh nah man he's he's good with the commentary he knows his shit so yeah i'd say give him a listen definitely give him a listen he, right. he's, he's no, supported us we got some cool the scythe and then we'll we'll put this you know on my altar mm -hmm. so you know i and i waited for a very long time for for that one to arrive but you know it's a shame that that was how it came out i think it's comedy maybe it's like a symbol of like a new beginning it's a symbol of a new beginning. Let's get there, the there jokes. Uh, uh, there you go. That can be our next tattoo. You should get like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that may be good. You know, it's a turning point in your life. Definitely. Change for the better. You too, Tom. All right, big guy. Your story. Uh, two brothers arrested after keeping remains of father in house for two years. Man, we've done so many of these. I, th I think I got a good one. Can I, can I read this one off my phone? Sure. Yeah. What about this one? What about this one? Ooh, this one's good. But I actually, I would like, I think this one changed nicely with the, the uh, previous one we did. Okay, go for it. Okay. Man arrested after holding yakiniku, which is Korean barbecue, restaurant manager hostage. This is some, we'll get into some more Wiley Coyote shit. I love yakiniku. Yeah. Yakiniku is great. It's awesome, dude. It is, yeah. It's yakiniku so like, yeah, if you're not yeah. familiar with it, like, uh, yeah, so you get these like little bite-sized pieces of meat. They bring them to your raw, and they've got like you know a little grill. You just like you can throw them down, cook them yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you, mm -hmm. you can do is like you know they got some nice options for sauce. Mm -hmm. You can order tons of options, tons of good good high quality meat, and you, you can cook them up as you know as rare or as you know well done as you want. See, another thing about yakiniku is it's a it's the perfect place to go with a date. For example, if you're going to date somebody for the first time, you don't really have too much to talk about because you don't know too much about them. Well, the thing is you take them to a yakiniku restaurant and there's <clears throat> there's always something to do. 
So whenever you have that uncomfortable silence, you just order more meat and you cook it yourself. You know, and you're like, oh yeah, so uh, this is a uh, medium rare. Do you like medium rare? Boom, there you go. And so I'm just sitting there in front of like your spaghetti or pasta or whatever. I'd be like, so how about those Mets? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I agree. That, that's that's generally a good idea for a first date. And another thing I used to do when like long time ago and I'm single with first dates, like take them like shopping in interesting areas because like there's just like you buy stuff, man. That's expensive. No, not necessarily bu buy <laughs> stuff, just go window shopping. Like, I, I would take like chicks by like used to have a big comic store with like, you know, big, you know, statues and figurines. And there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of cool like, conversation pieces like to keep the conversation flowing. so missy oh, like or, batman or no. or Fuck. you know it doesn't have to be like in the comics or super knowledgeable it's just kind of interesting or an art gallery again like you know conversation keeps the conversation flowing but yaki niku is fantastic yeah yaki niku is good too well, unless could, they're a vegetarian or a vegan then yeah. you're fucked yeah but or you could do all three man that's a long day. Yeah, a but long if you don't day. like the person, you're well, just like, if you're, oh, if, God. well, you're trying to suss out if you're, you guys are really compatible or into, into each other. So that's that's you know a good way to keep the conversation. He going. obviously hasn't dated in a long time. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> I'm obviously out of crowd. This guy's been so I've been out of the game for ten years, but you take the cake. Like first we're gonna go to Disneyland, <laughs> then after that we're gonna go to get Yaki Niku, and then an art I'm gallery. Bet, I, and I've then, been and then out then of we're the gonna game get for, blood tests. What the fuck? I've 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 been out of the game for nine years, dude. Nine years, all right. My wife, nine years, she got married a couple of years ago. It's still we're, a, we're already, it's you know, a long time, man. That's, that's yeah, this is why, like, fucking Tinder, all that bullshit. I have no idea. Like, if I was if I was suddenly single, I would have no idea what I was doing. But why, why do I see grinder on your phone right yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about that. <laughs> now it's a comedy <laughs> podcast again. All right, all right. I got the train all back right. on the tracks. Mm -hmm. Time read on. All right, police on Sunday arrested a 28-year-old man who held the manager of a Yakiniku grilled meat restaurant hostage in Tokyo and claimed that he had planted a bomb in the establishment. That's, that's bad. Yeah, that's, that's, Don't that's, do that. It, 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 I'm pretty sure this bomb was made from acne parts. Is this it was, guy it was like one of those I, 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 Ikea do-it-yourself ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, later telling the police... Okay. This is where it gets good. Later telling the police he wanted to eat grilled meat before being arrested, investigative sources have said. No one was injured, and only a fake bomb was found in the restaurant in Shibuya Ward, sources say. Oh, Ooh, this is in Shibuya. Shibuya, wow. It's a pretty heavy pop heavily populated area. Oh, wow. The suspect, Akito uh, uh, Arakai, uh, sorry, uh, Araki, uh, allegedly told the manager he wanted to copy recent attacks on trains, suggesting that he may have drawn inspiration from the October 31st attack on the KO line in Tokyo, oh. which, in which um, a man stabbed a passenger and ignited a fire. Quote, I could have done the attack anywhere, but I wanted to eat grilled meat before I got caught. It was quoted in saying my sources. At least he's got class. Yeah, he's got a little bit of class. Might as well have a good, uh, good one good meal before you have to get forced to eat all that shitty prison food. Oof. Yeah. When calling for emergency services, the manager of 49 reported that the man had handed him a note and Araki instructing him to call the police as he had uh, activated the bomb. Rocky told investigators that during questioning, he quote unquote could not find another reason for living. After leaving his parents' home in the Nagasaki Prefecture, southwestern Japan, two weeks ago, became homeless in Tokyo Shinjuku district. Three box objects were wrapped in adhesive tape with cell phones were found inside the scene. The suspect told investigators they were, of course, fake bombs. Wow, wow, wow. So, what was his point? He just wanted to go to jail? He should have just stolen a Snickers bar from a 7-Eleven or something. Yeah, right? I mean, I mean, why would go, oh, he wanted to eat meat before. He probably didn't have money for the meat. So he went into like a high-class <laughs> Shibuya restaurant. Didn't he know Gins is the place to go? Anyway. Oh, man. Well, this well, is good. Dumb. I don't know. Dumb man. and dumber. Yeah. Dumb and dumber. That's, that's why I'm saying it goes kind of well with the last story. It does. Well, it does. Tom, dude, he pulled it off. Oh, man. Tom, Tom, off, you man. still got it. No, I was got it, man. I made a winning. Might have taken a bit of a hiatus, but I still got it going on. Baby. You do, you do, yeah. When you called me up a couple of days ago and you're like, man, I've got a story. I'm like, all right, all right. I was a little bit concerned. For now. Days, motherfucker. You do, you do. You should delete Grindr, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see how many stories we got. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. <clears throat> all right. This one, this is done. This is the dumb and dumber episode because this news is just ridiculous. Here we go. Uh, I'll read this one. Or Missy, do you want to read this one? And then I read this one or vice sure. versa? Okay, I'll read. Okay, then I'll read this one. It's a little longer. 
All right, 67 year old man arrested for stabbing son's friend during drinking party. Police in Yokohama on Saturday arrested a 67 year old man in suspicion of attempted murder after he stabbed a friend of his son as they were drinking on New Year's Eve. Man, this could happen to a lot of people because people drink really hardcore on New Year's all over the world. According to police, the incident occurred at around 2.40 a.m. Saturday at the man's apartment in Tsurumi Ward, Seki Shimbun reported. Police said the suspect, Toshi Aki Suzuki, had been drinking with his son, the son's friend, who is in his 40s, and a fourth man. Who is this fourth man? Yeah. The plot thickens. I know it does. It's thick as blood. At some point, Suzuki got into an argument with the son's friend, and when his son left the room for a short time, Suzuki stabbed the man in the stomach with a knife before he could be restrained. The victim was taken to a hospital where he was in serious condition, police said. Police quoted Suzuki as saying he stabbed the man out of anger, but did not intend to kill him. Well, listen, if you're going to stab somebody, but you don't intend to kill them, I think the stomach's like the wrong place. You just stab them like, I don't know, in the foot? Yeah. That's the way you get over here and stab you in the foot. Because yeah, I want like, you to live. Just, <laughs> right? put, your, put your hand on the table and just close your eyes. Oh, Promise no. it'll be over quick. No, 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 no. You could do that that thing that they did in uh, Aliens, where they put the hand down yeah. and then they <sighs> yeah, they put the knife in between the fingers. What's that called? There's some, it's got to be called something, like Charlotte's Web or something. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was a good scene, because like they would just they had the android. He's like... <laughs> Yeah, that was a great scene. Yeah, that, that's how you stab somebody without trying to kill them. Yeah. Stab them in the back. That's how my ex went to prison. Because you know, he was like the stand-up comedian and he like stabbed the heckler. Ooh. But it was in the back, so. That's, uh, like, it's not the best way to deal with a heckler. This is true. Tom loves hecklers. <laughs> no, no, I love seeing him get taken down, motherfucker. Well, her ex <laughs> took a heckler down, literally, <laughs> by stabbing him in the back with a that knife. A, that was a little bit too literal. Like, com <laughs> com comedy is supposed to be metaphorical, yeah. usually. Yes, yeah. yes. Sort of a bit nuance. I, th I think nuance went flying out the fucking window on fire yeah. into a dumpster that caused a bigger fire. Yeah. Well, this is interesting, though. 67 years old, that's old man strength with that knife, you yeah. know? Jeez. Some of these old geezers got some fucking rage issues, though. Yeah, well, I mean, you should. And it's like, oh, I don't know. I would like to know more about the situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. that's, a, that's the problem. Even when we, sometimes we get really good stories, but it's just like, fuck, man. I want to know more details. Definitely, definitely. Okay, um, that red part, I just wrote that in. By the time everything else is just legit. Okay. Okay, six teens, one man arrested for throwing fire extinguisher at police car in Kochi. Hmm. That's one way to get arrested. Yeah. Good for them. Police in Kochi City have arrested six teens and one 20-year-old man on suspicion of property destruction after they allegedly threw a fire extinguisher at a police car parked on the police station's premises. According to police, one junior high school student, two high school students, and three other male minors ranging in age between 15 and 17, as well as Musashi Takeuchi, 20, threw a fire extinguisher at a parked police car at Kochi Police Station around 10.20 p.m. on December 22nd, Sanke Shinbun reported. This group also sprayed the vehicle with a fire extinguisher. The seven suspects were identified after police reviewed surveillance camera footage in the vicinity and arrested between December 23rd and December 29th. Yeah, cancel Christmas. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's one, one way to get a fucking arrested. Why well, does it do that to a police <clears throat> car? I mean, with like, cameras like, everywhere, there's cameras everywhere, kids. Well, here's the thing, like, I can... I'm not. I'm not saying I approve of this sort of thing, but like, oh, I, oh, I, oh, oh. I, I, I can see why, like, you know, teenagers just being dumb teenagers and just like, you know, they just like, want to break, sh break shit and rebel and blah blah Angst. blah. Yeah, but the thing is, the 20 year old is, is an illegal adult. Should have fucking known better. The thing is, like, these kids, like, they're gonna probably get a slap on the wrist because they're minors. Yeah, it was like, you know. But like this 20 year old, they're gonna throw the fucking book at him because it's, it's my understanding that cops don't generally don't like it when you wreck the shit. Yeah, they don't like that at all. Um, yeah, so this 20 year old kid, he's gonna basically take the cake for this one. Yeah, um, he'll definitely get uh, well, I don't even know what they're gonna throw. Well, the out destruction of, of property, um, <laughs> vandalism because it's because it's like you know, police property and city property, they're gonna sure. fucking they're gonna throw the book at him. Oh, he's gonna have to pay. Uh, it's just Japanese cops, so he didn't get murdered by the cops. Yeah, well, it's so still, yeah, yeah, it's still, cool. it's not cops in Chicago. Silver lining. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, also, but probably this guy, pro probably, I don't know, what is it, contributing to the delinquency of minors? Because you know, because he's a 20-year-old, they're going to fucking pin everything on him, saying he 
basically coerce the kids into doing it. Well, why is it twenty-two a twenty-year-old kid hanging out with like fifteen-year-old kids? Yeah, I was thinking that. Uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, probably because it's a fucking loser and you can't make friends with people his own age well it is I hate, I hate to say this but like you know fucking as soon as i was in college man i had like no interest in hanging out with like high school kids and listening to their bullshit drama yeah yeah unless they listen to the podcast and then that <laughs> sign it's up for the patreon like shouldn't kids. be <laughs> give, yeah. give it all the dark shit we've talked about today <laughs> i don't think you can't fucking... go up if you haven't been down i've said true, that before you know so yeah today was like uh i don't know how we're gonna title this one uh dark days dark days dark day i dark don't know we'll think days, of something dark days with the sun coming up and getting better i don't fucking know i don't know i'm sleep deprived and i need more coffee okay well i guess that's it for the news faders all right um jeremy thank you very much for not being on the show you missed it <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy owns a bar and uh, basically he slept in and missed this podcast. Unless I can, I can read one more. This is this is this kind of dark. We're already like two and a half hours in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe save it for the Patreon or whatnot. Save it for the Patreon. Yeah, that's what we can do. All right, faders, thank you very much for tuning into this very special episode of Got Faded Japan. All of our episodes are very special, but thank you very much. This is episode number 627. Wow, 628 should be up soon as well. And um, yeah, you know what? I mean, Tom and Missy, you guys are really honest and open in this episode. And you just like kind of like opened up your hearts to the faders and just, you know, I, I thought that was very, very special. I hope the best happens to both of you guys. Starting this year, I know good things are going to happen. I mean, you have one year of darkness, so nothing can touch you now. You're bulletproof. Today, we're going to have a great day. Tomorrow's going to be even better. We're just going to move forward. Tom, I hope you don't get fired again. I hope you find a great job. And faders, I hope for you guys, all of you guys are out there having a great groovy day. And um, yes, we are all sober on this episode for different reasons, but uh, we're going to get faded again in, in the future after, well, I got a, I got a, an art show that I got to finish. And then after that, hell yeah, the first, uh, during the art show, I'm going to be drinking. Maybe we'll do a Twitch. Maybe we'll do a Twitch at the art show because Ooh. Tom, you'll be there. Missy, well, your show work. I'll be there. It'll be fucking crazy. So sign up for the Twitch. Um, our Twitch was an hour and a half late because we had technical difficulties because my iPad is 12 years old. It's older than me. It sucks. And um, yeah. And faders, if you're listening to the show for the first time, we do have YouTube. We have Twitch, as I just said. We have Instagram, Facebook. We have TikTok. We have Twitter. We've got everything. We're all over SNS. Just Google Got Beta Japan and there you go. Support the show on Patreon. We got tons of stuff up there. We've got so much stuff up there. Um, we've got photos from what, eight years ago where Tom went to a nudie bar. And um, yeah, that is too hot for the internet, believe Pretty it or not. Um, Pretty interesting photos. I, <clears throat> I, yeah, I'm not going to say, just, just check it out. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. it. Looks like a tropical flower. I, I thought it looked like a stale clam. Like something somebody ordered in Ohio. They're like, oh, I'm like, beauty is in I'd like the to have the clam. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I, I guess so, man. My stomach turned. Um, anyway, Maters, thank you very much for tuning in. We'll definitely see you next time. This is a comedy podcast.